All right, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, are going to get this meeting kicked off as soon as we have a third at the dais. Any minute now. Thank you. Good morning and welcome and thank you for being here. This is the Gary Sansing Public Forum, June 16th, 2022, Board of County Commissioners, 8.35 a.m. Citizens wishing to speak must sign up. Forms are located at the back of the chambers. Please turn your cell phone to the vibrate, silence, or offsetting. The Gary Sansing Public Forum is intended for matters not included on the agenda for the upcoming Board of County Commissioners meeting. Citizens wishing to address items on the agenda should sign up to speak to such an item at the regular Board of County Commissioners meeting. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, disruptive outbursts, protests, or other behavior which interferes with the orderly conduct of the Gary Sansing Public Forum. Each speaker is limited to three minutes unless otherwise determined by the chairman to allow sufficient time for all speakers. At the chairman's discretion, the Gary Sansing Public Forum may end five minutes prior to the scheduled start of the upcoming Board of County Commissioners meeting to allow the meeting to commence on time. This morning we have nine speakers, so we will allow the full three minutes. We have 30 minutes this morning, so uh, we'll start first with Jerry Price, followed by Pamela Weirick. Jerry Price, you're recognized. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, is it okay to set this down right here? Yes, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I basically have one question, and Mr. Bergosh, I'm going to direct this question to you. And Let I me just hold his time for a second. Let me explain. We don't necessarily go back and forth. This is your opportunity to speak. Now, we might at our discretion, but um, you're better off sending any kind of requests or specific questions to staff or to my office. You're welcome to say anything you want. You're welcome to ask any question you want. Whether or not me or my counterparts reply is at our own discretion. Just wanted you to know that. Okay, Thank you for explaining time. that. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm still learning. This is only my second time in front of you guys. Um, I have um, a copy of Lee County's uh, ordinance on no panhandling, and I would like that to go here. Or do you just have one copy? Do, I just have one okay, copy. That's fine. I'm sorry. We'll get staff to make copies. Thank you. Um, I'm still learning how things operate here. Um, the that paper. Uh, is the ordinances for Lee County on no panhandling at intersections and right-of-ways. And I was hoping that maybe the commissioners would sit down and discuss the, uh, an ordinance on no panhandling. And I had four other questions I presented in the other forum that I came to, and I never got any answers back on them, so I'm kind of confused on if I'll get any answers to those questions because I've called down to the uh, commissioner's office to ask them to call me back and never got any calls. So I don't know if my expectations are too high or, or off kilter. Um, but um, if, you, if you guys could consider a no panhandling law on the intersections, um, um, it would be nice. But thank you for your time. Thank you very much. And I will say uh, that's, a, that's a tricky issue because there's a, a freedom of speech issue at play as well. Our attorney, um, I brought that for a discussion shortly after my election in 2020 at the, at the request of multiple citizens, but we are prevented, um, and Kristen, you're here. I don't know if you want to weigh in on it, but we're prevented from doing a lot of anything, and so is law enforcement, uh, so long as they're not physically walking in the streets. Um, other than that, you know, you can, there are cities that have gotten in trouble for violating free speech. But Kristen, can you elaborate on that quickly for this gentleman? Well, there have been several ordinances throughout the state that have been challenged successfully uh, on First Amendment grounds. So just standing on a sidewalk or, you know, anywhere other than actually impeding traffic, um, you know, unless it's a safety issue, then it's a First Amendment right. So there are limitations. Kristen, would you mind, if he sent you a, an email on that, would you mind sending any kind of relevant statutes back to him for his edification? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so just direct it to my office or to Kristen Houle and, uh, or anyone on the staff, and I promise you, you'll get a response. Can, can I give a short follow-up, please? Uh, 
Yes, sir. Make it brief, please. Thank you. Um, in Lee County, they, um, when they had to handle that, what you just discussed, and based on safety is why they made the ordinance, not on um, soliciting. Correct. And um, a county judge passed it. And so it's probably something that could be tested later on. Who knows? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for that. Okay, uh, Pamela Weirich, you're up, followed by Victoria Griffin. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioner. I'm going to ask in advance, did you get my messages? It's been about seven different messages asking you, due to my legal blindness, I'm having a real issue. Y yes, ma'am, and, and it's my understanding that staff has spoken with you. Nope. Debbie, Debbie, my aide, my aide has, has... No one got a hold of me. Well, she has, uh, she has definitely got a hold of the attorneys, and I have a couple of different um, uh, things that we can do legally to give you uh, some dispensation to help you. We can either give you an extra minute, which we will do, we can offer to have your notes copied and distributed, which we do already. I know that you send them out. We have these. We can, uh, let me finish. Uh, we yes, can sir. offer to have staff member read your notes for you if you're unable to read them, or uh, you can communicate by written communication, email, and or phone call to the commission okay. offices. So which one of those would you like? Um, my husband has the, 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 for the five commissioners I had printed okay. out, well, but we'll, I would like to read it if possible. Yeah, please. that's right. And, and, and what we'll do is we'll give you an extra minute that's what the lawyers, that's okay. what the legal staff have told okay. us. So when you, when you send yes, a bunch, when you send a bunch of emails, we, yes, we read them and we take action. So yes, you sir. have, she will have four minutes, four minutes. All right. And if we can do that, Tell okay. me when I can. and you're recognized. Okay. Thank you very much. I, this is our second meeting and I would like to point out since last June 9th, a few things have changed and I'd like just to point it out that Mr. Rob McCracken, Kevin Blanchard and the new Matt Skipper came to our property. Okay, they um, checked out our property. Now, Mr. Blanchard's been at our property since 2019. Okay, he was also a part of the crucial meeting in 2019, November, with Rosa Cessnuff and the engineer. Okay, and that was in 2019. Okay, so code 2000, in 2019 code 101-2 was not enforced. This is before any houses, any pads, okay, in 2019, okay? Also, I asked the, um, Mr. McCracken when he was there, I asked him about our shed, that it's $10,000 and that it floods, and he said it wasn't the county's responsibility. I explained to him at that point that could it be raised by the county, and he said, no, they're not responsible. The, the information that I got from Mr. McCracken was, and it was very, very, very heartbreaking, as he said, um, he told us that we don't have a plan, you're not in the funding, and I was very upset because I said in 2019, I was with Ms. Sesnoff, I was with an engineer, I was with Kevin Blanchard and one more person, and I was told at that time in 2019. Now the problem is, um, the, the um, it's, it's from Joan Swamp, okay? But the pictures that we had sent previously show the entrance to the subdivision flows at a slope, and it's obvious, flows directly to our property from the beginning of our house to the ending of our house, no one else's house. It flows into our property, okay? And because of that, it brings a lot of mud, okay? And in that mud, it fills up the ditch, okay? So now, we were told by Mr. Mr. Um, Blanchard and Mr. Um, Mr. McCracken, okay? <coughs> They looked at what's supposed to be a ditch, a culvert, and their words were, no, this is 50 years old, this is not proper drainage, brain, it's drainage, it's a no-brainer. That's why we're flooding. I wanna give kudos to Matt Skipper, and I hope he doesn't lose his job. He had a great idea exactly at that moment and said, we can create a culvert. If we create a culvert, the water that comes across Weller to your house is actually going to go in there and away from your house. It was a no, it was, I, we were told we were not on the plan, there's no funding and it's not gonna happen. So thank you to Mr. Matt. They brought sandbags during the storm to put on the third of the base of our shed to save it, okay? Now, the devastation that's happening just in three days of rain were pretty rough, okay? So it's causing a direct result to us it's causing hardship. We have over 400 homes 
to the back of us on Weller, Berkshire, lots of homes, NFI homes, HUD homes. Those homes have one road, one road only, Weller. So as it comes down Weller, it goes over the speed bump, and in the water, it goes to Gulf Beach. To come from Gulf Beach, you have to go back down there. So we now have, I would say, maybe, maybe a foot of water, but it's mostly mud. They're going back and forth, back and forth. And this isn't a regular rain. This is not a storm. So that's our concern, is the builder was allowed in 2019 when I pointed it out to the engineer. I pointed it out. Mr. Charles spoke to me, and he said, I suggest you get flood insurance in 2019. So I am told we are not aware of this problem. This is the first time. You're not in the plan. We don't have funding, so there's nothing the county can do. Buy flood insurance. That's not going to work. So we're asking for help. Okay, thank you, and that concludes your thank time. You. Was there any final comment you'd like to make? We I'm just asking you all just to, to look at it okay. and think about it. Thank you for being here today. I'm thank sure you, staff sir. will be looking into that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Yes, you as well. Next, Victoria Griffin, followed by Charles Luther. Good morning, Victoria. You're recognized. Good morning. Thank you for having this meeting. Um, I don't really need to take the three minutes here. One of the things I'd like to ask um, Commissioner Brunder is um, when you're talking to the people on the development on the Thompson Villa or Outpost, whatever they're calling it today, would you con see if they would consider putting in um, a barrier over at the Moors over in Milton? They were able to have, um, I say barrier, what's the right word? Um, buffer, excuse me. Um, over at the Moors, the developer offered to the landowners 100, well, 75 feet a buffer of trees and then 25 additional feet of new landscaping to satisfy the homeowners. There are four existing developments that this development is going to interfere with. And so would you just please ask them for that? And thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, Robert, did you want to respond to that at all? Nope. That's on my list of other things to ask for as well. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, very good. Um, all right. Gene, Gene, I'm sorry, Charles Luther. Charles Luther. Good morning. You're recognized. Yes, my subject this morning is the baby murdering business in Pensacola whose lawyer is working to get the suspension lifted so their work in Escambia County can continue. After I spoke in the public forum two weeks ago, someone approached me in the foyer and said they had concern that abortions becoming illegal would lead women to resort to using a coat hanger. Yes, what a predicament for the cause of making abortion illegal. According to this logic, the logic of this person and so many others who parrot this quote unquote concern, if states were to legalize rape, we'll save rapists from injury because you know, it being illegal leads many to resort to risking injury to themselves by the force they may use to break into a home. Is there no fear of God before our eyes? Are we content with our continued mumbling of the same lies that the pro-aborts repeatedly shout? One of their favorite lies is, it's the woman's body even with the unquestionable fact of separate DNA in each male and female child at the point of conception in the womb, moreover and greater proof that it's not the woman's body, the Holy Scriptures states repeatedly that personhood begins at conception. Now is the time for our commissioners to pass a resolution making Escambia County a sanctuary county for the preborn. As a point of fact, the greater majority of abortions are elective abortions that are of the type where there is a desire that one's lifestyle not be disturbed by having a child. In essence, the mother and the father, at times only one, at times both, are saying to the preborn child, you must die for me so that I can live my life as I wish. In stark contrast to this, the Son of God incarnated, in essence has said, I must die for my sons and daughters so that they may know me and worship me. Folks, 
The Lord Jesus spoke clearly when he said that there's two commandments. The first being that we should love the Lord thy God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second, that we should love our neighbor as ourself. And he said that in those two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You know, at the first of that second table of the law you find in Exodus 20 is you shall not murder. Our county has blood running through it. Over 100,000 women have gone to that mill. God help us. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up, George Levy, followed by Josiah Luther. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have a, one copy. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll have it put into the record, George. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you. Um, I mentioned uh, on your virtual coffee last week about the roadside water depth markers, and I just wanted to mention it to the other commissioners too. I recommend placing a, where the flood prone, prone areas where cars have been stuck in high water. It might be a service to the public, uh, especially small cars. Um, for the EMA, emergency management, I've, I've made comments before about we put out these guides every year and uh, there's been lack of information or could be better information. I hate to say it, but it appears a highly opinionated local fish rap <laughs> scooped EMA and, F and, and FEMA. They added to their list of emergency preparedness to have emergency toilet facilities. Maybe all of you in the local EMA have a tree in your backyard, so you don't need it. <laughs> um, Sandbagging, emergency management, I am afraid all the effort providing fuel for sandbagging is potential waste. For those who want to minimize water intrusion into a building, the sandbags are not enough and a waste of resources. How many times have sandbags been used and the building still got water intrusion? There's other things you have to do besides sandbagging. The Colonel Shappy James Memorial, for those of you involved in this memorial, I highly recommend some people take a closer look at the design, layout, and arrangement. There could be a major safety hazard built in. Military compatibility. I'm glad to hear on the news about this. Has anyone asked if the, mil the military if they have a recommendation for use of uh, any of the OLF-8 property? possibly some light industry to support NAS or the military. Um, also for military compatibility, limiting and prioritizing beach access. Here the military gives the land to the county and then things have been privatized and limited access. Fire protection, doesn't this go for pro protecting property and should be paid for by the property owners? Who benefits and not non-property owners? Um, Pensacola Beach, parking, I heard on the news that's an issue. Maybe raise a toll on the Bob Sykes Bridge from $1 to $1.50 or $2. That would, and use the money for um, added parking, maybe a parking garage. Have a good day. George, thanks for being here. You're welcome. Josiah Luther, you're up next, followed by Eric Sharplin, you're on deck. Good morning, sir. Good morning. You're recognized. This is the Lord's commandment for us. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. Tens of thousands of human beings, image bearers of God, have been murdered in this county. Those responsible for their deaths have not been brought to justice. This heinous sin of murder is largely accepted and few have stood up to decry this blatant injustice. God commands us to deal kindly and justly with orphans. The victims are a whole new level of orphans. Their parents have disowned them and seek to have them murdered. Justice, compassion, and human dignity call for the equal protection of all human life 
and thereby the abolition of abortion. God presides in the great assembly. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak, the poor, and the fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and oppressed. Rescue the weak and needy. Deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. They don't know, neither do they understand. They walk back and forth in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. All you are sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like men and fall like one of the rulers. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all the nations. I'm here again to tell you what God requires of you. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Speak up for the rights of all who are disowned. Thank you. Eric Sharplin, you're up. Uh, three more. Followed by Alan Walski, you're on deck. Yes, uh, uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to compliment you on the way the library is coming. Thanks. Despite the ECW and all their crowd, they don't seem to know all the facts. And I just wanted to uh, compliment uh, Commissioner May for all he does for our, our youth. It, you, you're to be commended. And I hear a lot of criticism of Mr. Barry, but Mr. Barry has always been a nice guy to me. He returns my phone calls. People are complaining. He won't return them. Well, why do you return a phone call to people who are going to be nasty to you? And I just wanted to, to commend y'all on the job y'all are doing down here. Y'all seem to be doing a great job. Thank you. And I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eric. I greatly appreciate that, the kind words. Alan Walski, followed by Edward Robinson. You're on deck. Good morning, sir. You're recognized. Hi, how's it going? Good. Um, just tell you a little story here. Um, I bought a house in Perdido Estates subdivision on South Bower mm -hmm. uh, about two and a half months ago. And at that time, I wasn't aware of any flood issues or anything like that. I bought a house because it seemed like a really nice subdivision to live in. Um, it's beautiful. Um, uh, after being there two and a half months, um, hearing a lot of gossip and complaining from the neighbors about flood issues, drainage issues to a retention pond. Um, it's to my understanding that the county's aware of it. Uh, there are some legal issues with whoever constructed the subdivision or something like that, not retain, not uh, maintaining a retention pond or something, you guys. Is this ringing a bell? It, it, sir, it, do, it doesn't, but I, t I would ask you this. If you will email my office, I'll have staff look mm -hmm. at it, but I, I know this. Once, once they sell a certain number of homes in a subdivision, mm -hmm. the responsibility for maintenance There's, of, um, of the, of, well, let me finish. The responsibility of maintenance falls on the homeowners association. So mm -hmm. are, do you have an HOA? There is no HOA. Um, that's what I'm hearing is that the, the, the problem is that the retention pond, if there is one, to me, walking around the subdivision, it looks like the drainage drains into the woods somewhere. If there huh. is a retention pond, I don't see it. Um, have you flooded? Has your house flooded? I have not, but I've seen pictures of, of my neighbors one block away from me with two feet in the water, and it's, it's really quite scary. Um, you know, I'm just here. I'd like to think that I represent the whole neighborhood if they don't have time to come and speak. Sure. Um, you know, if I would have known that I was going to have these kind of issues, I probably would have, wouldn't have bought the house. Um, you know, it's a really nice neighborhood. It's not going to be so nice when it's underwater. And then What's the name of the subdivision again, sir? Perdido Estates, Perdido Estates on South Bower. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, it's an older subdivision. Okay. Um, it was to my understanding that there was a plan to do something to claim the, to claim the land, to claim the private property or something like that because it wasn't because there was some permit issues or construction issues that uh, that weren't that weren't right. I, the guy got sued or something and then filed bankruptcy under, and then he started the business under a different name. And there's just a lot of gossip going on and I'm just trying to learn and understand what's going on. And if there is a plan, you know, everybody wants to hear it. Sure. Well, I, number one, I appreciate you being here. Number two, uh, Administrator Marino, I think has something he wants to say. And then my yeah, aide, Debbie Kenny, is right there to your left and after you're done speaking if you give her your contact information we'll we'll okay. make sure it gets looked into okay yeah, i think West? some of the issue is the holding pond is private some of the private holding drainage, pond. drainage infrastructure runs through private property as well and so that precludes the county uh, public works from going in and making any uh, improvements it has been a topic of discussion in the past how do we uh, how you know how do we attack it legally 
-hmm. And so that's who, kind of who where it's at. the property, Wes? Because can't we get them to dedicate it? I don't believe they're around anymore. Oh, okay. Well, there's obviously multiple issues here. We're not going to work it out here in, in a minute. But uh, if you'll get with my aid, Debbie, I promise you Just I'll like look into it. Just like to get the discussion going because yes, everybody's talking about it, and I don't know why they're not here. It's, well, you know, I'm glad you're here. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Edward Robinson. And final speaker will be after him will be G Gene Brown. Yeah, this is in regards to Jackson Branch Lakes. Okay. Uh, town hall meeting, 20 years in the workings, none. A representative that's absentee, constant. Yep. That's right. I'm looking forward to the uh, representation of Mr. Honer or Kevin Brown or Chance. Uh, disappointed that y'all have been giving easements away on our aquifer and you don't own the water. A lot of defiling of the freshwater aquifers going on. I brought it to each someone's opinion, many people's opinion in the county since the days of George Tewart. Uh, many. Uh, Mr. Harper, uh, y'all act as if you have no knowledge. Uh, many intrusions. I have requested for Mr. Marino to be placed on the uh, written agenda to give and take questions, which is a reasonable thing concerning the uh, a normalcy, uh, the enormity of this uh, uh, defiling of people's water. Approximately eight, 9,000 people's on it. Uh, approximately two people per household, 20,000 people. Uh, 20 to over 32 new contaminants. Now they're working their best. Uh, they're working their best to try and install uh, filters and what have you to accommodate. Uh, the influx of contaminants. Mm -hmm. But uh, y'all have a lot of things going on here on Citrus Street, you know, with your uh, gravel pit. Uh, had some many issues there with y'all burying sludge, grease, uh, even sewer, throwing tires, uh, oil filters. Once again, Mr. Tour addressed it. Uh, I'd like to see this on the written agenda to uh, discuss it further because many people. Uh, that's on the pond is being given away property without any acknowledgement to those of us who uh, live right next door to it. Sir, um, Tim Day, do you know him? Uh, He's know him, code know enforcement. him and Chip and everybody. Okay. I'm just asking to be placed on the written agenda uh, for this to be discussed with the board. That would have to be worked through staff. I, right, and I have talked to them as well as Mr. Marino and wrote, wrote the qualification to be requested. I have not been returned a call or what have you. Uh, you know, it's very unsettling when we talk about our aquifer. In particular, the first tee, uh, what is it? Uh, Mr. Stanovich? Marty Stanovich, yeah, hitting golf balls in the aquifer. Just one of several. Uh, 208 Alton Road, uh, installing an unauthorized, unpermitted structure on the aquifer with a sunken vessel is one. Uh, 850 Chasefield County installed some uh, no parking signs, giving that lady ownership to where you can't even look at the waters. Uh, down further here at uh, Sandstone Apartments, 20 years. Thank you for your time. Thank County. you for being here today. Okay, and thank you. And, and I look forward to following up with that. Yep. Uh, you say to get on the written agenda. We yep. got to give. You got to you got to work through staff on that. Oh, I thought uh, isn't That's there right. a written agenda person? Yeah, it, it, you, know, you, you get to the agenda by working yeah. through staff. Yeah, they research yeah, work, the issue and then they bring it for our consideration. Remember, Mr. Ritter Streeter? Yes, sir, your time is up. Oh, Thank okay, you. Mr. Thank you. Okay, yep. I just would like to give this to Ms. Kilgore. Yeah, like staff will take it. Just give it to Sharon right there. She's right there on your right. No, 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 no. You're not going to walk up on the stage. No, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Thank you. Jean Brown, Jean, uh, sir, thank you. Jean Brown, final speaker. You're recognized. Oh, we need term limits. You've got to get term limits. Barry, Boone, you've got to go. You, yeah, you're yeah, right. All right. Good morning. Good morning. That's a tough act to follow, right? That's a tough act to follow there. Yes. I'm glad it's you. Oh, I am Jean Brown of 1475 Family Drive for 54 years. My opposition to the Thompson Bayou uh, Villas development is partly about feelings. My feelings of love for my home and the character and quality of my existing neighborhood, protected by the comprehensive plan and the land development code. 
but more than feelings, there are facts that cause us grave concern. One, stormwater runoff. Water does not recognize property lines. Runoff ponds and stays for days in our yards, including mine. Is there a county drainage easement which allows runoff from the development to funnel onto my property? T uh, Thompson Bayou on Finley overflows, continues to JoJo West Side intersection. Is that proposed retention pond adequate to contain the massive deluge? Uh, flow continues to Wood Run where there's already a serious flooding problem. Flooding, flooded homes. My home has flooded several times. Others on our street have flooded or have 15 inches of water under their house. Health and sanitation. Toilets don't flush. Plumbing gurgles. Dishwashers and clothes washers don't work. Sludge backs up through drains. Water line ruptures raise questions about drinking water safety. Septic tank drain fields. Homes have had to replace drain fields. Three had to elevate septic tank and drain fields. One site directly across from the development had to be elevated three feet before construction. A septic tank is pumped and it fills up by the next day. Another has to pump annually. One company pumped three septic tanks on Finley Drive in one day this spring. The water table ranges from one to seven feet at different addresses on Finley as discovered by digging in their yards. Every home on Finley has a story of water problems. Is this normal? It's not a story that you will see simply by driving around Finley Drive. The current stormwater problem is serious. When the uh, site is paved over and becomes 80% impervious, it will become much worse. Other concerns, traffic. Traffic will increase by 500%. And two items from the um, May 12th staff comments. Um, one says the fire department access roads are to be at least 20 feet. Both Finley and JoJo are 18 feet wide pavement. And um, there's another that uh, refers to proposed removal of all protected trees along JoJo and West Side right of way. Is this going to be done? I don't exactly understand what all of that means. The development's in a wellhead protected area. Uh, what is the address? GIS called it 8900 block of JoJo Road. That would be somewhere in or near Escambia Bay. The street numbers along our area is 12 to 1400. Gene, you got to uh, wrap your comments up. Thank you very much. Thank you for Remember being here. Finley, JoJo. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we have an elected official in the house and I was going to recognize her. She, I don't know where she went. Debbie? Okay, well, um, State Representative Michelle Salzman from District 1 is here. Um, and I believe she's bringing some news for us. Uh, if Debbie can rouse her off the phone, or if not, we'll just have to bring her after the meeting. She, is she out there? Where are they, guys? Give her a minute. All right. Courtesy. Where'd she go? <laughs> She needs to hang up. She can call him back. All right. Yeah. We're adjourned. We're going to start in five minutes.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start a meeting in two minutes. Two minutes, so if you could find your seat and please take it. Two minutes. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and start our meeting, please. Take your seats. Good morning. This is the Board of County Commissioners regular meeting, June 16th, 2022. It's 9.13 a.m. Please turn your cell phone to the vibrate, silence, or offsetting. The Board of County Commissioners allows any person to speak regarding an item on the agenda. Speaker is limited to three minutes unless otherwise determined by the chairman to allow sufficient time for all speakers. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks disruptive outbursts, protests, or other behavior which interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting. Upon completion of the public comment period, discussion is limited to board members and questions raised by the board. Uh, this morning, Commissioner May will be bringing our invocation. Commissioner May, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's an uh, honor and a privilege uh, to introduce the Pastor Michael Thompson of the Greater Union Baptist Church uh, for our invocation. Pastor Thompson. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come before you this morning. We thank you for this day. We thank you for life, for health and strength. We thank you for bringing all of us safely to this appointed place. We pray now that you would be in the midst and we pray that even as our leaders make decisions, we ask that their decisions would be influenced and guided by you. In Jesus name we pray, amen. 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 Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Thompson. All right, uh, gentlemen, are there any items to be added to the agenda? Um, Ms. Hool? No. Commissioner Bender? No, sir. Commissioner Berry? No. Commissioner May? No, sir, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Underhill. No, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Nothing from me. Uh, Nothing from me. All right, good. Rocking and rolling. All right, uh, Commissioner's Forum, let's start with you. Uh, Motion to approve the agenda. Okay. Motion and second to approve the agenda. Please vote. Passes 5 0. Commissioner's Forum, uh, Commissioner Bender, you're recognized. Uh, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I didn't want to recognize uh, Lieutenant Nick Grady, who was recognized last week as a recipient of the 2021 Florida Professional Firefighter of the Year Award presented by the Florida State Fire Marshal's Office. Um, of course, uh, you know, we've all had a chance to work with Nick as uh, he's also the union president, uh, serves a lot of his time out at Station 7 out of Ferry Pass. So I uh, appreciate uh, his great honor and all the work that he and the rest of our Scammy County firefighters uh, do every day. And then also I want to recognize Sam uh, since it's her last meeting up here. So 
appreciate you being up here and working with me as I was chairman and everything else to do for all the, all the meetings we have. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Barry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, you did recognize uh, Representative Salzman a little bit ago. She's, she's back in the room. My comments are going to kind of center around. Uh, I want to thank her for um, organizing a constituent service day in Molina. Uh, you know, she had, she had uh, you know, she was out there herself, uh, had, had representatives from her office, from our office, from ECUA, as well as Representative Gates' office, and, uh, you know, I think there was a lot, a lot of value, <clears throat> a lot of value from being, you know, from being in the, uh, in the district and, uh, you know, sitting and uh, interacting with folks for a couple of hours. I know there were, you know, several dozen people, I believe, that came through and received services of, uh, of different types, um, so I want to thank her for doing that and welcome her today, so nice to see you. Thank you, Commissioner Barry. Um, Commissioner May, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and certainly want to give my thanks to Pastor Michael Thompson and uh, the great work that you did on last week with the Vacation Bible School with all the young people. Uh, it's really great work that's happening in our community uh, centers and the great work, obviously, that, that your wife is doing. So, again, we want to thank Greater Union for, for all of their assistance. Um, I do have to recognize uh, Representative Salzman, Michelle, uh, my favorite. Um, <laughs> But uh, certainly we were able to be with Quint Studer and Dana Suskin in the early learning and uh, this week and uh, Reggie Dogan and Quint Studer and all those who were uh, uh, with us and certainly appreciate it. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm not going to be long, but I, I did ask you know, a little bit through, through my um, commissioner's remarks. Uh, we know that we're celebrating Juneteenth uh, this year for the first time, and there are a many, many, many events, I think, that's headed up. Uh, by the city council and uh, Councilman Broughton and Councilman Wiggins. Uh, but one of the things that I uh, came in knowledge of uh, was a broad, something that's headed to Broadway that's coming to Escambia County. Uh, it's the Henry Box Brown, A Musical Journey. And uh, if you don't know the Henry Brown story uh, of a slave who uh, was brought over in a box, and uh, it's a remarkable story uh, and a, a remarkable uh, testament uh, to what happened uh, to this family, and it was pretty tragic, but uh, it will be a musical, uh, and we do have uh, with us uh, a very dear friend of mine who has really worked across the country and the world in musical theater and is somewhat uh, nationally known, uh, but it's right here in, in here in Escambia County, and it's Eric Dozier. And I asked Eric to just stop by for two minutes, if you don't mind. I would Please yield my time to Eric uh, to Eric to have someone of his statue here um, for this weekend for this um, great theatrical play that's going to happen. So, Eric. Good Thank morning. You. Welcome. Thank you all so much. I, let me first say that I am uh, now a very, very proud resident of Pensacola, Florida. Awesome. Just closed on a house uh, on uh, North L Street. Mm -hmm. And I'm very happy to be there. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, invite you all to come and see this musical, uh, Henry Box Brown, a musical journey about an uh, enslaved brother that uh, conspired with a, a white minister and a white shop owner to mail himself from Virginia to Philadelphia, spent 27 hours in a box. Uh, and uh, uh, we found this story reading through children's books. Uh, uh, and as a co-founder of a children's theater out of New York City, uh, it fascinated us. And we wanted to, to really kind of capture that story in song and uh, eventually turned it into a musical for grown-ups and ended up getting invited to take it to Broadway. So we're going to Broadway in 18 months. But I am from Southeast Tennessee, grew up in a small rural town, and my grandparents always said, is your music and your ministry useful to the community? And, uh, uh, and that has always driven my, driven my uh, compositions and, and everything that I've done, those, those little messages from my grandparents. And uh, I'm so happy to finally see all of that being manifest on the stage. And I really appreciate uh, the reception that we've gotten from the Equity Project Alliance, uh, Innisfree, and a number of other folks to bring the show to town. Wanted to invite you out. There are four shows, Friday and Saturday, at 1 o'clock and at 6.30 at the WSRE Theater. I hope you all can come out. You can find tickets at henryboxbrownthemusical.com. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks again, Eric, and, and thank you for the journey, and thank you for working with our young people in our community. We're certainly appreciative. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, absolutely. Com uh, Commissioner Underhill, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
Madam Attorney, Madam Assistant Attorney, um, we, I believe we have a uh, hearing coming up tomorrow uh, with regard to the 401A issue, is that correct? Yes. Has that been publicized anywhere? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Um, I find it. I, I found that surprising that it wasn't. I know that that's an issue that's of very uh, high importance to the community. So, uh, it is a Zoom meeting, as I understand. Are yes. you familiar with it? Yes. So it's a Zoom meeting, and uh, and the uh, the judge has stated that it's open to the public. So for those who are following that issue and are interested in it. Um, you, know, you do have the ability to, uh, to join in by the Zoom meeting. Um, as with everything else with the court, you do have to actually give your name so you don't get to be anonymous. But uh, if you need a link to that, uh, uh, to the Zoom link, um, you can either get it from the court or if you want to hit up my office at district2 at myescambia.com, uh, I'll be more than happy to give it to you um, uh, as well. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Underhill. Um, before I take my time, I'm gonna take the moment to invite uh, our state representative from District 1, Michelle Salzman, up to the podium. Um, Michelle, thank you for your service. Thank you for being here today and all your hard work, um, and you're recognized. Thank you. I, I'm sorry I was stepped out for a phone call. Uh, I just wanted to come and introduce um, a newest staff member, Jennifer Harrison. Just stand up and wave. I wanted to make sure y'all knew that I have. she'll be coming to some of these meetings, and so if a constituent or anybody has an issue that my office could possibly address, I just wanted to make sure we have an extended arm. And while I have the microphone, I just have to say thank you to all of my partners up here for all of the work that we've done. And I really appreciate you last minute jumping in, um, Commissioner Barry, with that constituent service day. And I mean, I know that was like, what in Molino? But we had almost 100 people come and WEAR did a really good job of showing it all day. And the number one concern I can tell you was the VA. It was a resounding VA questions, VA, VA, VA. There wasn't a single person that had a question for FPNL or a single person that had a question for ECUA. It was, um, it was really interesting. Um, there wasn't many issues with roads or I mean it, it was mostly just VA now the constituents wanted to come out to meet the staff and and it, it was a really it was a really good experience we're gonna do another one in a few months I think it's something we should be doing regularly nobody wants to have to know a secret handshake to get service in the in you know in the community and I know each and every one of you guys are here because you want to help people so we don't take this job to not help and when we're all in the same room it really helps people understand that that we do love and care for all of them so I appreciate all of you and of course my favorite um, Republican on the dais, um, Commissioner May. Love you. So, thanks. <laughs> well, you, well, maybe you can zoom into that conversion. <laughs> All right, Stephen, you're yeah. ready. Wes, did we end up uh, did we end up adding a position for our veteran service office? I know that was that was talked about a little while back. We made some modifications for him to retain him, uh, and we are looking at as we move forward hiring him an assistant. Okay. Uh, he, he has right. a, an extremely heavy workload over at the COC, and he does yeah. a fantastic job. Well, my th thoughts, I mean, and that's, uh, I mean, that, that's pretty, you know, pretty enlightening, the comments there. You know, if we might, uh, I thought there was some, you know, some interest from him at least in trying to hire an assistant, but even if, uh, even if prior to doing that, if, you know, we might could house him, uh, you know, one day a month out in that Molina Community Center, I mean, it's a large public asset, you know, with the tax collector, the property appraiser, and, the library, all those functions in there. Um, you know, if we might could have him out there, you know, even for a half a day a month, uh, you know, for a few months to try to help address some of these concerns, I think that's a reasonable, you know, I think that's a reasonable request, um, um, you know, to just make it a little bit, a little bit easier. I, you know, I was, it's not, that's not often the feedback that I get personally, so I wasn't, you know, really aware that that would be that hot button of an issue out there, but if, if uh, you know, given the fact that it is, we do have some resources that can help in some manner, so let's uh, let's try to do that, and you know, then see about trying to get him to uh, fill that assistant position. Sure, he'd be happy to. All right, thank you. Uh, for my part, gentlemen, uh, I want to thank uh, Chris Phillips. He's our traffic engineer. Um, there's uh, never a shortage of issues with traffic uh, in Escambia County, and a lot of them in District One. Sadly, on Monday afternoon, we had another traffic fatality and two serious injuries on Sorrento Road again. It's a very, you know. I, I don't want to sound like a broken record. We talked about this at the town hall. Massive, overwhelming support from the community to, to get that road uh, the attention it needs. It really should be four lane based on the volume. Um, but to that end, I appreciate Chris Phillips taking time from his day to go out there and look at several of the intersections and propose um, some fixes that are going to be implemented, particularly at Doug Ford Drive with some striping changes. So thank you to Chris Phillips for going above and beyond. I also want to thank him for meeting with uh, residents off of Bellevue Avenue on some, some speeding concerns, 
um, and just really working closely with the South Bay neighborhood and a development coming in next door. I've been ringing his phone a lot, so I just want to say thank you for taking the calls and, and getting out there and working. I also want to, you know, there's a lot going on in Pensacola and a lot of it is really good. And we heard a lot about American Magic and, and what that's going to do for sailing in the community. Well, out in District 1 on Pine Forest Road, we've got a little uh, racetrack. It's called Five Flags. Maybe you've heard of it. It's a great, it's a great asset for the community. And I live in Beulah and I, I've been there. I can hear it when they're racing from my house in Beulah, but I love it. Well, this Saturday night, we're having the SRX race, which is a brand new um, series, and it uh, features the. T I'm not. I'm not a race car guy, but it features names that you would know. So I, I want to invite everyone to ch ch take a look at what's going to happen in Pensacola. It's going to be nationally televised on CBS, and this board supported it with some TDC money, I'm, uh, TDT money, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. But they they love Pensacola. They're going to places like Boston, Nashville, Tennessee and Pensacola, Florida. And it's just another way we get on the map and people get down here and see what a great community we have here. And I'm um, just very proud that that's happening this weekend. And again, I wanna get back to Sorrento Road. Sadly, we had another fatality out there. And um, this is an opportunity for citizens who want that road fixed with proper shoulders, wider lanes, uh, more Florida Highway Patrol patrols. It's a state road that runs right through uh, the southwest portion of Escambia County in my district. Um, this is the opportunity for citizens to speak out. If you go to myascambia.com right now, there is a link to a state survey, and the state prioritizes these projects. This one's been on the books languishing in the 20s for many years. We're trying to move it forward. We've had 86 wrecks in the past 15 months. Now, people will say it's not the road's fault. It's the driver's fault. Okay. There's bad drivers everywhere, but I see bodies stacking up on that road. I see crosses multiplying on the, on the, there's something wrong with that road that needs to be fixed. They're doing it, they did a safety audit, they're making the changes from the foot of the uh, Bars Bridge up to Bower, but they need to work that section from Bower to Blue Angel. Anyone that drives that road, I drive it all the time. I, I don't like that road, there's potholes, there are people that get very impatient um, because it's only two lane, they make um, bad decisions and try and pass. There's a lot of close calls out there we need massive Florida Highway Patrol patrols out there. Michelle, you're here. Whatever you and Doug can do, Broxon, Broxon, Senator Broxon, whatever he can do to help, we need that. We need FDOT to really take that road seriously. Purdue Key is growing. We've got another gigantic uh, development, 300 units at the, at the foot of the Bars Bridge. It's coming online, um, especially during the summer. Whatever you can do to help with that. And citizens, go to myscambi.com click the survey. If you live in that area and you drive that road, make your voice heard. This is your opportunity. Um, they won't do anything without hearing from you. Um, so please take the opportunity to do that. Thank you very much. Wes, you're recognized. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yeah. Go ahead, Doug. Um, I want to speak to a couple of those items, the veterans issue. Um, Wes, um, there's a captain, retired Navy captain, Marsha Williamson, who runs the veterans issues up on uh, at base. Um, the key to making it work for us, for the veterans, is being dialed into the overall resources. Sure. Um, one of the things that I've struggled with the entire time that we've been here, and you know, we, we did get a, a position created, that was a big plus uh, while Jack was here. Um, it's still nowhere close um, to, to the level of rigor that we need, and we're not as dialed into the federal government resources that we should be. Um, if you want to get it right, um, get dialed in with Marsha uh, uh, Williamson uh, up on base, and I'll, I'll go ahead and email sure, you her number. Um, uh, very, very tightly dialed in at the federal level of what's available. Um, this is an area that dollars spent here um, come back very easily because you know, mm -hmm. these are men and women who have earned um, uh, benefits from the federal government. And those benefits, when they come into Escambia County to those individuals, are then spent here. Um, so. You know, we should, uh, we, a, si a community of our size with the need that we have, we should have three full-time employees in that role, and they would be working a hard 40 every week. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll pass you uh, Captain Williamson's number, um, and I think you'll find her to be a, a dynamo of energy <laughs> and, uh, and, and very resourceful. Thank you. As you address that issue. Uh, and then, Jeff, you, you, certainly Sorrento Road always should have been four-laned. Um, you know, uh, our failure to, to, to fund our part of an interlocal agreement or agreement that we had with the state before uh, set it back. Um, we've been able to get the intersection changes uh, done um, at the or, or underway at uh, you know Gulf, Old Gulf Beach Highway and also at Bower Road. Not nearly enough. 
Um, the Doug Ford issues that you're talking about, you know, we got an additional lane in there, you've got the new striping coming. So all of those incremental steps are great, but at the end of the day, it comes down to $5 million local. Um, it, we need to, if we elevate this on, in priority, uh, we commit two and a half million now and two and a half million three years out, we can get the PD&E started. It's a four stage process, as everybody up here knows. PD&E is phase number one. Um, there is no question that during PD&E, the requirements uh, that the, for it to be a four lane are absolutely, you know, get a, get a pass muster. Uh, but you can't get to design and you can't get to build without PD&E. And the state won't start the PD&E uh, until we commit to uh, two and a half now and two and a half later. Those numbers may have changed. Obviously, everything's changed in the last couple of six months or so. Um, but those, that's not heavy lifts, and all we have to do is, is elevate that at the, at the TPO in a priority or just, you know, say, bypass the very cumbersome TPO process and just fund it ourselves. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Underhill. Uh, Wes, anything else? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to highlight an, is an, an initiative that we took off on a couple years ago with our dump trucks. Oh, yeah, that's great. Uh, so yesterday we were at auction in <laughs> Montgomery, and the trucks we bought for about $159,000, we pulled in $238,000, $235,000 per truck. After we drove them for a year. After we drove them for <laughs> a year. <laughs> and even our older trucks, the 2007 models, brought in $82,000, $80,000. So, you know, kudos to Jamie Higdon and my public, work, public works guys out there. They're really, it was a great initiative, very creative, and it's, uh, it's really good for us. Too bad it ain't going to be a long-term thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I also want to thank Sam as well. I've been at this for about a year now. She's been a great help. You never, you just don't see the grind that it takes to get the agenda together. Uh -huh. And it's a, it's a heavy lift. And Sam, I, I appreciate your assistance this past year, and, and I wish you the best. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, I like that jacket. I mean, well, you, you, I like you, you, you're really stepping up. I mean, I'm man. trying. Man. I got to keep up with you. <laughs> it's hard on this jacket deal, but uh, certainly, um, I would be remiss if, if I didn't do one or two things. Sam, uh, being chairman, uh, <laughs> sitting next to you uh, was the most comical and the best times. I, I got great quotes from you. I'll keep hit the bully first. You know, it's not my sir. I, 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 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so you really um, made it smooth and uh, just a, a great, genuine public servant. Uh, and I mean, keeping the chairman going, I know when I was chairman, uh, you know, you really helped guide it. And uh, in stressful times, you always gave some comic relief. And I appreciate all that you did for me. I appreciate it. And Mr. Chairman, one, yes, other, th one other thing, in, in working with Representative Salzman, uh, the mental health issue uh, in the last couple of weeks, I've had the displeasure of seeing two to three of young people who I've coached who've committed suicide. Uh, and I say that the mental health uh, is important, uh, just as our other, you know, whether we're diabetic or high blood pressure, or whether we have anything, mental health is just as important as physical health. And so Representative Salesman, it's really directly hitting our community and certainly want to pledge my support and hopefully this board support to what we're doing for mental health. And so thank you so much. Yeah, please, by all means, by all means. We appreciate you being here. I really hate hijacking your meeting. I want to mention you have the full support of the state with Sorrento Road. I, I, I mean, I've even spoke to um, my counterpart, Andrade, about it. Uh, we're, whatever we can do to help, um, uh, definitely on board with that. And I'm going to give a shout out to West Marino. We talk about mental health. I wasn't going to bring it up because that's all I ever talk about. And I know the town is like, stop talking about it. But I mean, we were in a meeting with the sheriff and um, I'll let other people tell that story later, but it, it was about mental health, homeless issues and things like that. And I mean, the county has been a great partner. You, you don't have to bleed dollars to, to support a cause. And you guys have been at the table the whole time for this. And I, it's a story I'm happy to tell others. So I appreciate your support. You're gonna be doing something really big soon that's gonna blow everybody away and it doesn't cost any money. It's the coolest thing ever. But um, for, for the mental health um, conversation, I. I fully support it. I, I, I do want to say that having that mental health task force has done exactly what it was supposed to do. It collaborated resources, but it also brought in state partners. We have deputy secretaries of all the major agencies that come to these meetings. Public safety just got a couple of million dollars just because they sat next to her at a meeting and they were talking about how we really need X, Y, and Z. And they're like, oh, we have grants available. It's like Century getting the $3.2 million. It's because they applied for grants and we were at the table. So when you're there, you get to be a part of the conversation. But any 
anything I can do at all with mental health and partnership, I'm happy to do it. But the county is doing a great job. I mean, Lumen, you've been there. Commis sorry, Commissioner May. No, you've been no, there. Com <laughs> Commissioner Bergosh, you've been there. You know, I, and so, and, and even Commissioner Bergosh pledged some of his own dollars to, to part of this um, initial process. But we're bringing in tax dollars, your your tax dollars from the state agencies as well, not just collaborating resources locally. And I am so sorry to hear about your young kids. It, it breaks my heart. If there's anything that I can do, any phone calls that I can make for anybody listening, please don't hesitate. I spent 45 minutes with a young lady yesterday at the Constituent Services Day who was just trying to find services for her child. And I mean, it's it's a heartbreaking situation, but we have a real problem with mental health in, in, this, in the whole world, and we really do need to put it at the forefront of our conversations. Absolutely. Any other questions? No. no. I don't, I don't want to have to come back up here again. <laughs> Sorry. You Thank you, Representative. Okay. No, your, your efforts in action for mental health uh, uh, is certainly appreciated. And uh, Mr. Chairman, one yes. last thing as we get this meeting. Uh, in this climate, this economic climate, when you know we can't, you know, restaurants close down early, we can't find people to work, uh, it's a testament uh, to Claire Long and her staff and our some employment staff that we had almost 400 children to register uh, to work. Awesome. And we started with 17, and I, I see some of the staff here. Uh, but I want to certainly thank those program directors uh, and those managers and those who um, will allow for the young people to come in in an apprenticeship and mentorship because it's easier to not have them. We know that training costs money. Mm -hmm. It's easier to do it yourself. My, my daddy would just say, boy, you're too dumb. Get out of here. I'll do it <laughs> uh, because I would hold him up because I didn't know how to you know, nail a board. Uh, <laughs> but I, those things to sit and watch. And so I do want to appreciate all the departments. Uh, in our constitutionals that are allowing these young people uh, for us to grow our own. Yes. Uh, we keep talking about what, how are we going to make it better. I mean, people keep talking about homelessness and affordable housing. How can someone get an uh, uh, affordable home? They get a good job. I mean, how do people get right. out of poverty? They get a good job. Uh, right. And when we had all these vacancies and all the advertising, we can grow our own right here in this game, your county. And so I do want to thank those departments. I want to thank the staff um, to go out and get over 400 children to register and our partners at Escarosa that has helped us to at least place about 200, I believe 210 of those young people have been placed a majority right here in Escambia County. I think I see some of the interns. If you're an intern or you work summer employment, can you stand just so people can see and, and the departments, if you are. I know my interns here and I, I, I see two in the back, Mr. Rich and Chase, I know y'all are working. So we, we appreciate that. So if y'all would just give them a round of applause. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, thank you, Commissioner May. All right, next up we have a special presentation from uh, Maurice Moody, the HIV, HIV AIDS area coordinator. Um, Mr. Moody, please step forward and, and you're recognized. Thank you for being here. Good morning, commissioners. Good morning. Thank you for allowing me to say a few words about the importance of HIV prevention, testing, and National HIV Testing Day. I am the Area 1 HIV AIDS uh, program coordinator covering four counties from Escambia to Walton. And the two chief goals of the HIV AIDS program are to reduce and stop the spread of HIV and to identify those who are positive so that we can place them in care and treatment. Now these past two years have been challenging for all of us. And albeit COVID-19 has dominated the headlines. I want the public to know that HIV is still with us and has not gone away. The first cases of AIDS were reported in the U.S. in 1981. And 40 years later, we are still dealing with HIV AIDS. In 2000, the last year in which we have data, Escambia County reported 40 new cases of HIV. The highest percentage of those cases were between the ages of 25 and 29 at 28%. The encouraging news is that the four-year trend between 2016 and 2020 shows a 9.1% decrease in the overall cases. However, blacks continue to be disproportionately infected while making up 23% of the population in Escambia County Blacks accounted for 60% of those cases. HIV is preventable, and that's worth saying again. HIV is preventable. 
Those 40 cases in 2020 were 40 cases too many. We encourage the public to take steps to eliminate their risk of acquiring HIV. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC, states that of the 1.3 million Americans living with HIV, approximately 15% are unaware of their status. This is because HIV comes in three stages, acute, chronic, and long-term HIV disease, which is actually AIDS. And it is during the chronic stage that a person may be asymptomatic for 10 to 13 years. Consequently, many are unknowingly transmitting HIV. So we encourage couples to test together and share the results with each other before intimacy. If someone's reluctant to, to do that, that should be a red flag. DOH Escambia provides free rapid HIV testing Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. We also provide a free HIV night clinic every first Thursday of the month from 4.30 p.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. When we can identify people who are HIV positive, we can place them in care and on life-saving medications, also known as antiretrovirals which can bring their viral level to undetectable. And the CDC states that when one is undetectable or virally suppressed, one cannot sexually transmit HIV. This is known as undetectable equals untransmittable. And that is amazing. And so it is really, really exciting to be in HIV prevention at this time. Undetectable equals untransmittable. DOH Escambia has the responsibility to keep the prevention message in the forefront. However, the public has a responsibility to heed the message. Reduce your number of partners. Get into a mutually monogamous relationship. Don't share needles. Both partners get tested before intimacy and share the results with each other. Engage in protective sex. See if pre-exposure prophylaxis, PrEP, is right for you. And PrEP is medication that one takes daily that can prevent one from acquiring HIV. And to learn more about PrEP, we encourage people to contact, contact our PrEP navigator, David Camille, at 595-6345. And yes, abstinence is still a winning message. Lastly, I want to share with you what we have planned for National HIV Testing Day on Monday, June 27, 2022. First observed on June 7, 1995, National HIV Testing Day is a day to encourage people to get tested for HIV, know their status, and get linked to care and treatment if they are positive. This year's theme is HIV testing is self-care realizing that when people know their HIV status, it can help them stay healthy. We have two events planned at two locations. We're going to be at the Walgreens at the intersection, at the intersection of Cervantes and Pace from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., providing free rapid HIV testing on our mobile unit. And we will also have uh, some free take-home test kits available as well. In addition, we are, we are going to be at UWF from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in the Commons, Building 22, to give a 30-minute presentation, then a 15-minute Q&A session, and then we will conclude with rapid testing upstairs in um, rooms 259, 265, and 268. And again, we will have free rapid take-home test kits available as well. Stopping the spread of HIV requires collaboration, partnership, coordination, and teamwork among interagencies. And we certainly appreciate the, the support from Walgreens and UWF. And I want to publicly thank Commissioner May for coming out and participating in our press conference last year as we were unveiling our U equals U campaign. And Commissioner May, you made the event. You made sure that the, 
media came out, and that was really, really important, because it's important that we keep the message in the forefront. It's really important. So thank you, commissioners. I really do appreciate you allowing me to share this very, very important information. Again, prevention is preferable to cure, and HIV is preventable. Thank you. Maurice, uh, Mr. Yes. Moody, thank you for yes. your work that you're doing. Unfortunately, you're right, many of the health disparities adversely affect um, black and brown neighborhoods and, yes, uh, and the many years of the, of the struggle struggle that Georgia Blackman and yes. Pansy and all those have done yes. you know growing up as even a student at UWF we were doing uh, HIV awareness and you've continued uh, to do it and we certainly support you and uh, let me publicly say um, how I, much I appreciate your wife and the work that she's doing in the Lincoln Park School uh, that's one of the schools that I've kind of adopted and your wife has done a omens job uh, tremendous work and so please uh, give that um, to her and how much I appreciate what she's doing thank you so very much Luke, my appreciate that I will pass that on to her thank Mr. You. Moody yes. quick question for you yes. so if someone shows up at your event how long does it take to, to do a rapid because yes. I think the rapid test is only 15 minutes 15 okay so just yes. like the rapid COVID yeah. it's a fingerprint okay, okay good yeah. and, um, and, in the a and the uh, accuracy is about 99% specificity and 99% uh, sensitivity it was very accurate. And you had mentioned, uh, and I apologize, I, you know, I guess I hadn't really thought about this in a, in a number of years with COVID and everything else, but um, mm -hmm. you had mentioned the three phases. So if, does the test identify where you're at on that progression or? No, no, no. So. no. And, and the, the thing about the test is that we have to be real careful. And that's why in the counseling session, we always mm -hmm. ask, when was the last time you put yourself at risk? Because there is a, uh, something known as a window period. And mm -hmm. that's the amount of time it takes the test to pick up the infection. Gotcha. Yes, yeah, so if a person were, say, infected last week and comes in to get tested today, that test may, in fact, come back as negative, but in actuality, the person may be infected because some tests, has a 30, some tests have a 30 day winter period, others, others may have a 45 day winter period, and the old technology has a three month winter period. Okay. So we would encourage the person to come back to close out that window period. And if, if the unfortunate happens and a person tests positive and they don't have insurance or maybe they don't have really good insurance, I know the, the treatments that are out there are very effective, right. but they're very expensive. Is there, does are. the state subsidize that or how does that? The Ryan White Comprehensive AIDS Resource Emergency Act, okay. signed by President Bush in 1990, President W.H. Bush, mm -hmm. is the most, one of the most effective federally funded programs <coughs> in the history of our country. And it is, it is there for those who are underinsured, uh, un, uninsured, and we have, a, we have OASIS, uh, which is our lead agency, and they are contracted with AIDS Healthcare Foundation, and they provide medical services for those who are eligible for the Ryan White Care Act. So if a, so if a person's concerned but may not necessarily have a lot of money, or you're going to take care of them no matter where they're at on the spectrum? Yes, sir. Because financial we ability. Yes, sir. Because okay. we don't want people to be HIV infected and right. not have medication. Right. Absolutely. That would create a, I mean, a large number of people uh, acquiring the infection, and we don't want that. Absolutely. Well, yeah. thank you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much and for being here, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah. And, and I, I would encourage you to spend a little time with Mr. Moody. You'd be alarmed at how many young people are yeah. HIV positive. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I can say because. I work in the community. I'm, I'm very familiar uh, with the work that he's doing, and quite frankly, very familiar with a lot of people with HIV. But the Ryan White Foundation and Oasis are doing great work, and I, t I can tell you, I've not met or known anyone who needed the services that were rejected because Good. of finances. Good. Yes, that's okay. right. Good. And let me also say too, again, HIV doesn't discriminate, right. knows no boundaries, and it's based on behavior. It's a behavior spawn epidemic. The youngest person I ever had to tell that she was positive for, was 14. And so it, it is there, it affects all of us, and, but we can prevent it. That's the most important thing I'm trying to put out. It is preventable. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, very good. We have proclamations. The chair would entertain a motion. I move the proclamations, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion to second on the proclamations. Please vote. Proclamations passed unanimously. Proclamation A will be given at a separate event. Proclamation B, uh, Commissioner May will be presenting Amateur Radio Week. Um, so whoever is here to receive that proclamation for Amateur Radio Week, please step forward to the podium.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Whereas amateur radio operators are celebrating over a century of the miracle of the human voice broadcast over the airwaves. Whereas amateur radio has continued to provide a bridge between people, societies, and countries by creating friendships and sharing ideas. Whereas amateur radio operators have also provided countless hours of community service, both in emergencies and to other local organizations throughout the decades. Whereas these amateur radio services are provided wholly uncompensated. Whereas the county also recognizes the services amateur radio people also provide to our many emergency response organizations, including Escambia County Public Safety. Whereas these same individuals have further demonstrated their value in public assistance by providing free radio communication for local parades, bike-a-thons, walk -a -thons, fairs, and other charitable events. Whereas Escambia County, Florida recognizes and appreciates the diligence of these hams who also served as weather, spot, as weather spotters in the Skywarn program of the National Weather Service. Whereas the AR... A A R R L Amateur Radio Field Day exercise will take place on June 25th, 26th, 2022 and is a 24-hour emergency preparedness exercise and demonstration of radio, radio amateurs, skills, and readiness to provide self-supporting communication without further infrastructure being required. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Escambia County, Florida, does hereby recognize and designate June 20, 20, 20th through the 26th, 2022 as Amateur Radio Week. Board of County Commissioners, Jeff Bagash, Chairman, Douglas Underhill, Vice Chairman, Lumen J. May, District 3, Robert Bender, District 4, Stephen Berry, District 5. Thank you all for your service. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I want to thank come on, commissioners and Tampa County as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll be doing our exercise this, uh, uh, the 25th and 26th of this June uh, down there at Ashton Brosnan Park. Right you are all invited to come out and see what we do. We're also going to have the fire uh, district race out there as well as uh, Scambia Search and Rescue and also uh, a few other folks right. out there. So please come on out and enjoy the When is that and what time? It'll start at uh, about 9 in the morning. We'll be there at 6 in the morning and we'll leave Sunday at 4 in the afternoon. What date? Say again? W when? What, what's the date? It's Saturday and Sunday, June 26th and June 25th. Okay. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Please. Uh, welcome. And uh, I, I did take Sloan out there last year, and we spent a couple hours, and she got to, there's some fancy drones. I mean, she, I, I don't know, uh, she was able to hear some of the communications with the radio. That didn't catch her attention as much as uh, some of the folks that had super fancy drones. And they, you know, they, they came down maybe a foot over her head and you know, kind cool. of played. And I mean, she, she had a good time for a couple hours with the, with the, uh, all the folks that were out there, but I want to thank you for your hospitality, and, and we did have a well, good time. Well, we appreciate you coming thank out, you. sir, and thank you very much. Thank you, thank thank you gentlemen, for being here, being here this morning. Yes, thank you again. All right. Photo op. Here we go. Oh, photo op. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. All right. Uh, next order of business today is our written communication. Um, we've got an item in Commissioner Barry's district. Um, Mr. Barry, do you want Thank to you, have Chairman. do you want to have Kristen set it up, or you? I'll, I'll take it. All right, you recognize? Um, is the do we have any speakers? Is the request do not see any. here? I don't think she. Sh I think she did not sign up, but I think she is here. All right. So we probably need to assist her in getting signed up. Miss Dor Dorothy Davis. Do okay. Yes, ma'am. Please come forward, and then we'll just have you fill out a, a sheet after. But yes, you, you're recognized. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning. And you're Dorothy? Yes, I'm yes. Dorothy okay. Davis. Yes. All right. And I just, just want to make sure I understand the, the timeline of the case. So um, so you acquired you acquired the property and upon acquiring it, you learned that there was uh, that there were code issues there, that there were code issues on the property. Is that no. right? No, no, I'm sorry. What okay, uh, what, no. what happened? First of all, good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm here representing an 80-year-old woman that has cardiac, pulmonary, 
and digestive ailments that keeps her from being able to come. Mm -hmm. Her name is Ernestine Whedon Wiley. Okay. She lives in she lives in in Pensacola, but the property at issue is at 5624 Cedar Town Road in Molina, and she acquired the property over 25 years ago when her mother died, Dorothy Whedon, I'm named after her. Anyway, um, when her mother died, she willed the property to three sets of heirs. One was Ernestine Whedon Wiley, and then the, two, uh, the other two sets of heirs were the, the children of her deceased sisters that live across the country and none of them have ever had any interest in the property. They haven't paid anything for the property. They haven't paid the taxes. Ernestine has, has uh, carried the burden for that in good faith all these years. I, the reason the property is an issue is she wants to sell the property, but there is a lien against the property that was transferred to the property from a property that some of the other heirs had in Cantonment, Florida, one at, on Greek Street. Anyway, when that property was sold or whatever, the liens against it were not uh, paid. And by, because their name was on the property in Molina, it was transferred to the property in Molina, and it's there. There were a total of 13 people involved. Um, of those 13 people, two remained in the area, and that's Ernestine Whedon Wiley and uh, one of her nephews. The rest were scattered around the country, and one also lived, was, lived and worked in Europe for a while. Okay. She's not, she hasn't been tech savvy, or she still isn't. So I got involved in October because she is, her health is failing and she was going to let it go. She didn't want to, but she can't afford to continue the maintenance that pay the taxes and everything else on a fixed income. So I got involved and using uh, the internet and all the different apps, I tracked down all of the other people and I found that one is deceased. Uh, everybody else did, signed a quick claim of the property over to her. The one that's deceased, his wife and is willing to, um, you know, sell, has agreed to sell it. But there is a lien, and I'm here to ask you all okay. to forgive the lien, which is about $6,500. Um, you, did you want to say something? Because there's two other key pieces that okay. you... Please, okay. please continue. Uh, the other two things is I submitted a request to have the liens forgiven to, through the code enforcement, and I want to thank uh, Lieutenant Davis, Terrence Davis, we're not related, uh, for his help and, and guidance on the process to follow. But in response to my letter, I was told that, number one, if that, that it couldn't be forgiven because of an owner on it, and number two, that um, it required, well, I needed to come to you all to do it, but everything is in the letter, the documents that I sent you. Um, anyway, uh, they told me that the, the last recourse that I have is to come before the Board of Commissioners and ask you all if you would please release the lien so that she can sell the property and the proceeds from that will allow her to be able to stay in her current house in um, Pensacola and hopefully never have to go in a nursing home or anything like that. Um, I think I've covered everything. Okay. And oh, wait, one last thing. Hmm. The, the other, other item, and I apologize, the other item that was on there, it said that there was a lien against the property at, in, in Cedartown, on Cedartown Road, and that lien was identified at the time that it, code enforcement went out to look at the, prop, at the property in order to um, process my request. 
that the, the lien addressed the condition of the house that was there. So to ensure that there were, that her record of maintaining the property in, in good standing and in the community so that it's safe, she had that property torn down and it cost $4,500 to tear it down, to clear it so that there are no violations against that property. And the violations that are cited in the, the, the lien are not and were not, they were never against that property. Okay. Um, so all the, the correspondence has been, you know, basically from you and you're in Texas, is that right? Yes. Just on behalf of, yes, on behalf of I, Ms. Wheaton Wiley, in, okay. I came in yesterday. Just for to, this? Yes. Okay. All right, if you don't mind, let me ask somebody from staff a question behind you. If, if you'd have a seat for a moment. Or just step to the side for a second. All right, Tim, I just want to make sure. So when the request when the request was made, there was there were there was a violation on the property in January on yeah. the Cedartown property. That's so, some of the so premise. To, so to be clear, there there was an issue with the property. There was never a complaint. There is nothing in, in the system on a complaint um, um, when they were when they made the request, you but went when they made the request, it. we went okay. and checked it okay. and had noticed overgrowth and some problems with the, the home that was there, okay. and, and they immediately took care of it. All right, so that so that's been abated, and um, um, and none of the hard costs. I mean, the this this property is not the source of the of either one of the two that's, liens, correct? That's correct. And even though one of the minority one of the minority equity holders at this property was affiliated with the other properties, Miss. Ms. Whedon Wiley was not affiliated with the Greg's properties. That's correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Right. She received it through inheritance. Okay. All right. That's good enough. Um, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I would move that we that we release uh, that we would release the Cedar Town property from the from the liens. There, the liens will still exist. They'll still be associated with the Griggs uh, Griggs Road properties, which, uh, you know, based on the property appraiser, uh, the county appears well positioned to be able to eventually collect those liens based on those taxable values and those still existing liens. But uh, I would move to release the Cedartown property from the uh, from the liens. Second for discussion. Okay, discussion. Doug, you're recognized. Thank you. Ma'am, I want to make sure that I understood <clears throat> the individuals who um, uh, engaged in the activity that created the lien on the other property. Yes. Uh, those individuals have signed quick claim deeds to, to this property now, is that correct? Yes, all except for one, and he is deceased. Okay. And the reason I ask is that I would, you know, the reason that we tie up other properties is to motivate people to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it would be uh, difficult to support this if we were gonna, if it would benefit those who were the, uh, the, the bad actors. Uh, so the fact that those bad actors have no possibility of, um, of gaining uh, mm -hmm. from the action that we're taking here, that's why I'm able to, uh, to second and support. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All right, please vote. Good job, Ms. Davis. Thank you. you. Yeah, yeah, you won. What's the vote? <laughs> if you don't say anything else, you won. Okay. Uh, I think I think you're in pretty yeah, good shape. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. If you don't, if you, you just like, like kind of like sit down, you got it. Wait, uh, Lumen, I, you got to press the button. Wait, I do have to say well, one more thing. thing. Thank you, you all so very button. much, and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Safe travels back. Thank you. All right, that passed unanimously, uh, Commissioner Barry's. Um, Motion. All right, very good. Moving forward, did the clerk's office receive the, receive the proofs of publication or the public hearings on the agenda and the board's weekly meeting schedule? Mr. Chairman, the clerk's office has received all proofs. From Move which publication were they published? From the Escambia Sun Press. The Escambia Sun Press. I love it. Thank you. Chair, we waive the reading. Motion. Second. Motion second. Please vote. We love the Escambia Sun Press. God bless them. God bless them. All right. Next up, the clerk and comptroller's report. Pam, you're, you're recognized. Thank you. I have two items on the consent agenda. The first one is the TDT collections for May. You'll see that it's $10 million to that point. That's eight months. It's pacing very well. Airbnbs as well as condos. And um, we still have the higher months yet to come. So it's a good turnout for the year. The second is routine items for minutes and reports. Thank you. We do have a, spe we do have a speaker on your second item. Chris Kerb, you're recognized. I'll be real brief. Uh, I sent y'all a, a Google Drive this morning, as well as Pam. Um, 
It's the testimony from the 6-2 board meeting uh, public forum. Uh, it's written testimony uh, from, I think we had six neighborhoods and 30 flood defenders. I don't believe they all spoke, but uh, uh, I, I would request that that be uh, included in the public record. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yes, um, you Madam Assistant Attorney, is that something, if someone brings a written item, isn't that isn't that copied and put into the into the uh, the backup of the meeting? Yes. Okay, so that's that's what we do. So it's it may not. I mean, we keep it. That's why when people give things, we make copies of it. Well, so, I was a little late sending you the digital format of it, so uh, <laughs> my cup runneth over. I've been pretty busy lately. Good, good for you. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Stephen, you're recognized. Move the clerk's report. Second. Motion and second to move the clerk's report. Please vote. All right, clerk's report passes unanimously. Growth management report. Horace Jones, you're recognized. Yes, sir. We have a, a good morning, Commissioner, Chairman, board members. We have a recommendation concerning a final plat for approval for Glen Hollow subdivision. No speakers. No speakers. Mr. Chairman, are you good with this? I'm very good with it. All right, move the item A and B. Second, Mr. Chairman. All right, motion second. Please vote. All right, that's all we got. Next up, County Administrator's Report. Wes, you're Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are seven items on the Technical Public Service Consent Agenda. Please make the following changes. Drop CAR 1-7. I move the balance, Mr. Chairman. We have no speakers anywhere else. On second. The motion and second on the balance. No speakers. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I need to hold five and six for a separate vote, please. Okay, five and six. Okay, so we're going to hang on. Five and six. And then we're, we're dropping seven. Okay, we'll hold five and six, drop seven. You want to amend your motion? E so yes, amended. Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, second amended. Okay, yeah. motion is second on. As amended, uh, hold five and six and drop seven. Yep. All right, we got a motion set. You good, Delana? All right, please vote. Okay, balance passes unanimously. Uh, item five, Doug, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I've uh, been spending quite a bit of time thinking about this and looking at it over the last uh, uh, eight years. The, the efforts to do taxpayer incentivized uh, uh, economic development, um, you know, the realities that were in place 10, 15 years ago are no longer in place here in Escambia County. Uh, with, the, with bringing in NFCU, we actually met uh, over <laughs> the objective of the, uh, the number of uh, new jobs that we wanted to bring into town with our PEDC efforts. Um, and uh, in, in doing so, really kind of exacerbated by, by accelerating, sometimes it's the, you know, it's the, the embarrassment of riches, um, we exacerbated a lot of the problems of, uh, of growth and infrastructure that we have here in Escambia County. Uh, it's a good problem to have, uh, but it's also a problem that has to be addressed. I think that um, the realities in our community now are not such that we should be spending taxpayer dollars uh, to bring in uh, new jobs when almost every uh, business in my district is begging to try to get somebody to come to work. Um, COVID exacerbated this in, in ways that none of us could have imagined back then. Mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, it's true for all of Florida. Uh, Florida is full. Florida has too many people in it now. And Escambia County is, uh, is, is right there with it. We have more people than we have the ability to serve. If we continue to uh, say, you know, business is open and everybody come to Florida, everybody come to Florida, we are going to destroy the Florida that we all came here for or that we grew up with. Um, we have demonstrated an inability to, to keep up with the infrastructure. We've, de it, we've demonstrated over the last 10 years that uh, the increase in ad valorem taxes that we take uh, with this growth is insufficient to meet the infrastructure requirements. So uh, for that reason, I think that we are, uh, it, it's, it's wrong-headed for us to continue to use taxpayer dollars to try to incentivize uh, businesses to come to town, that all of our economic development efforts now should be focused on making our existing workforce uh, more competent, more capable, more resilient, and more flexible uh, to, uh, to work with, to advance into the, uh, the, the, as the economy changes. So for that reason, I have to vote against uh, uh, both of these uh, recommendations. Okay, so um, the chair would entertain a motion on five and six together. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, in, in, in response, uh, the, I certainly think we have to, 
continue to look at how we do economic development, how we grow our existing businesses, how do we become more inclusive, uh, particularly with small and minority businesses in, in that recruitment and, and enhancing them. So I, I look forward to that com to that conversation uh, that, that we can have uh, about how does economic development look uh, for all citizens of, of Iskamia County. Well, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about the conversation because you and I have been saying that for eight years and you said it for years before that. And you know what, Lumen? Nothing is different. And nothing is going to be different as long as the same people are in charge of PEDC. You've said it a number of times. You've admonished saying, how many jobs you created in District 3? That number is still zero. Um, so I, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not looking forward to the conversation. I've got 154 days left on this dais. Um, I, I, we just need to change. And, uh, oh. and it changes by stop doing, you know, if, you're, if you're an alcoholic, you, you start fixing yourself by stop drinking. Well, the way, if, we start, if, the way we start fixing is we stop doing what we've always been doing. I mean, it's it's real simple. You can you can figure it out in kindergarten. I mean, how many jobs did you create, and who did you create them for? That's just how, that's what economic development is. But we ask yeah. it all the time, and we yeah. never get the answers. We get are all the hoity-toity, a bunch of whole. Well, we went to this, we flew out to Singapore, we did this, that, and the other, and it's always it. it, it what's different? Eight years I've been sitting up here. Twelve mm. going on what ten for you? Mm. It's been Nothing, a long time. It's, it's just not a whole lot different. And so, no, I'm, I'm going to stop doing the same thing, at least for the next 154 days. Uh, that's, and, and hopefully that will be a part of the dialogue uh, as, we, uh, as we go into election season. Uh, we spend a lot of money on economic development. We have a lot of headlines for economic development. We do not see significant changes in our community as a result of the taxpayer dollar spent. Uh, the chair Second of the motion. Okay. Do we have a who? Yeah, made, I'm, I'm motion. Made, 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 okay, made. we have a motion and a second. Before we move on, I just got to, I have to disagree with you wholeheartedly, Doug. The thing is, just because we have Navy Federal, great company, I'm a big cheerleader, that doesn't mean everyone who wants a job at Navy Federal gets one. That's why we got to keep diversifying the job space. We got to bring in companies like Circular Gene. We got to bring in companies like Pegasus. We got to bring in companies that I can't name that, that represent these two letters that I've put on the board. And most importantly, we get money back to the community from Triumph Gulf Coast if, the, if these are successful. And then when these companies open, they create opportunities that ripple out throughout the community. They hire people. They hire people that are from here. They bring in people sometimes from out of town who buy property and pay taxes. I mean, the, the benefits are, are really limitless. And, and I tell you, um, to say that Florida is full, I think is just preposterous. It's ridiculous. I, I love the fact that Florida is open. It's the home of liberty. People, I used to live in California for many years, and I'm so glad I live in Florida. Better governance, better tax structure, um, in many respects, in some cases, better weather, although that's a tough one. Um, but, to say, but to say we're not going to do economic development anymore is, is just, it's just short-sighted. It's, it's kind of ignorant. Um, there are a lot of people, Lumen, in your district right now that work at Navy Federal, and they're very thankful for that great job they got. On the other hand, there are people that have applied at Navy Federal even people in the military, serving in the military, who just can't crack the nut and get hired there. I'm not going to give up on them. Just because Navy Federal didn't hire the military veteran or the person who serves in the reserves right now couldn't get an interview, or another one that serves in the Navy reserves couldn't get an interview, or the retired uh, sergeant major from the Marine Corps who wouldn't get an interview, just because Navy Federal doesn't hire those people, they're hiring people from your community. They're hiring, yeah, they're I mean, hiring young people. So I'm never going to stop trying to diversify the job space. I think what we're doing here is the right strategy. I mean, we all saw what happened in the oil spill uh, when it fell apart. You, you pull out one leg of the stool, the tourism sector, the whole community suffers. If we can diversify this thing and bring in great companies like ST Aerospace, Circular Gene, Pegasus, these others that have that have that, that are coming forward now, um, the next oil spill or calamity we have won't be so devastating because we'll have more of a diversified uh, jobs base. So I I, pr I probably anticipate this will be another four one that you lose, Doug. But you're but you're absolutely absolutely wrong on this one. Jeff, I mean, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and so Jeff, any good portfolio is, is diversified. I mean, you know, that's right. I mean, you 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 diversify in any of your investments. That would just be prudent and smart. Uh, and and certainly I think that. You know, obviously, Navy Federal, STR Space, and all those high tech jobs are great jobs. I think it's important to align your economic development with your educational goals, strategies. Uh, the, the reality of it is everyone's not going to go to college. Everyone doesn't want a desk job, and so it has to be diversified. And so that's right. that's, that's what I believe in. I mean, the statement of growth, uh, candidly, um, you can't compare South Florida growth to Northwest Florida growth. Our growth is not moving at an alarming rate, you know. Uh, and certainly, even in the city of Pensacola, I don't, I don't, well, this census, 4%. 
five percent. I mean, we're not growing like South Florida, so there is still room to grow. I mean, if you don't believe it, ask Commissioner Barry. I mean, Century has plenty of room. I mean, so I mean, there's a there's a, there's a lot of places that you can find growth uh, in Escambia County, and quite frankly, uh, it's called growing pains. <laughs> you know, right. so people, you know, we want economic development, we want jobs, but we don't want traffic. That doesn't correlate. I mean, you, if you're going to grow, you're going to have pains, and so we have to just accept those pains as we grow. Absolutely. Robert, you're recognized. Uh, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, this is just a letter of support for their application Correct. of Triumph. That's it. all it is. Which is dollars that for these eight counties from the BP oil spill. Right. We're going to get our share. Right. Because if it doesn't come to us, then it's going to go to the other counties That's right. in our area. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to support this. Um, you know, I mean, we, we look at uh, growth, and I mean, I know we've had talks about, uh, you know, expanding the uh, Cory Station mission over the fence line, um, but I guess we don't want those, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> it's it's uh, kind of interesting. I mean, it's, 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 I mean, businesses that already do business here in, in a core group of, of, of Cory Station, I mean, Doug, if I'm, I'm wrong, but I mean, that's what I just heard you say is that we don't want, I mean, you've talked about it. But now you're saying that, that we don't want them. Yes, you are wrong. That is not what I said. What I said was we do not need to be doing taxpayer funded. This is, this is Triumph. It's Triumph money. This is Triumph. Yes, and certainly the, the Triumph, the entire Triumph program is a little bit wrong headed, isn't it? And what, what has it done for us in the last decade? Very little. So and please don't, I mean, educate yourself better with regard to the tech jobs. <laughs> before you start talking about the missions, okay? Building roads through our bases is what's gonna destroy our economic development with those tech jobs in our bases, okay? Compromising the perimeter of our base, turning our base into a tourist event instead of a, something that defends a nation, that's what will cause compromise to those. And we've seen how that looks when BRAC caused us to lose 5,000 jobs in Warrington, okay? So, Let's make sure that we don't go. I mean, it, it, I guess it makes for good political theater, but no, I'm, I'm, I'm having a discussion. I'm <laughs> the not, growth I'm of not, those, the growth I of mean, the technology I mean, I'm, I'm, jobs. I'm working on trying to get Septic Sewer over on on New Warrington and Navy Boulevard so that we can get those get those jobs here. Spend your money on the septic to sewer. Spend your money on the roads and the infrastructure. Spend your money on advancing our workforce. I am. That's what our Triumph money ought to be spending on to make this place a more sustainable environment for work i'd say These, we are this constant effort to constantly sell ourselves to to constantly put ourselves out there uh for to get companies to come into town is forgetting the fact that this money actually belongs to the businesses that are already in town and this is not what they want us spending their money on you know, well, since I sound like we got two votes for some sewer money, I mean, because I tell you, I don't give a Rip Van Winkle about putting uh, sewer in for businesses when I have residents that live in historically old neighborhoods of Inslee and Brownsville and they don't have sewer. So, you know what? You're right. Yeah, let's all put our money where our mouth is. Let's tell staff to bring back a proposal to put $10 million into a, a septic to sewer. And you know what? I, I'll vote for it. I'll vote for it at the next board meeting because that's the reality of it. We, we should take care of our infrastructure before we start trying to take care of infrastructure to recruit somebody else in. So, I mean, that, this is a pleasant conversation. And so, and, and Robin, in terms of where we're going with this triumph, Jeff, I'm very supportive. We should get everything we can. I mean, we lean on staff. Right. We lean on, 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 on Scott Luke that Okaloosa and Santa Rosa are beating us up getting more money out of Triumph than we are, or, or Restore Pot, we ought to be going to get every single dime that we can get out of Triumph and out of Restore. And so I support that. Thank you. And, and the next thing we need to do is we need to speak with our counterparts on the school board, frankly. I've, you know, I've spoken to my counterpart. We've got to get a training academy to help the pipeline for ST. Um, Panama City's tearing it up. Oh, for construction. We don't even, we have no vocational in the school system. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It, I mean, it is. And, and yeah. we, you know, we went from 12 career academies in 2006 when I was elected to the school board to 72. The problem is it's a paper tiger. Many of them you finish and then, you know, you don't know what the kids do, whether or not they did anything. They need to do something with aerospace and airframes. They need to, to work with Triumph. Triumph has money to help them with their programs. I'm trying to convince them. I've spoken to Dr. Smith. I've spoken to Kevin Adams. I need to call Patty and Bill. But that's, that's the next step. But, but it's money that's out there. BP paid this money. This is penalty money. And we're trying to get our share of it, Doug. And I, you know, philosophically, we disagree about creating jobs. But this isn't taxpayer money. This is money that British Petroleum paid for what they did to our economy that we all live through. I personally lost a lot of money in a business. Had to go sue them. Um, so I lived it. And I'm telling you, uh, for you to say this isn't what people want, who are you to say that? You don't know. People want a good job, right? I know people want a good job, the ones who want to work. People, some people don't want to work, but they want a good job and they want an opportunity and they want a career. They don't want to necessarily work in tourism 
the tourism industry their whole life. They want good careers. And good companies like Navy Federal Credit Union, ST Aerospace, Circular Gene, Pegasus, many others that we're bringing in are going to offer that. And so that's why these letters are important. Let's take it to Triumph. Let's show that this board supports it. And let's bring home some money for Escambi County. And let's compete with Panama City and areas to our uh, east that are, that are really cleaning our clocks on some of this stuff. All right. No, and Jeff, Let's and I agree it. with you. And, and Jeff, I, I hope you take that lead in meeting with the superintendent. I mean, I'm because I'm it. not going to vote for any more economic development. And I'm serious. I'm not going to vote for anything that's not aligned with our school district. And our school district has a responsibility to teach our children. I mean, to prepare them for the workforce that's coming forward. And, and I agree. Navy Federal is great. IT is great. ST is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, but what's one of the most sustainable things we've had? Is the construction industry. Correct. And, you know, we're not even training our kids. And, you know, they're leaving school, you know, unprepared for this workforce that's come out. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I would fully support you if you would get with the superintendent. And I'll get with my school board member Please. because I know she'll be supported. We need we need Of how do we implement this we and tie all this together. Yeah, absolutely. So ST's begging. So we need, we need to do it. We need to support I mean, them. We got them here. They're building hangars. They're putting jobs in. Now we got to help They're them. playing four years of football and only three of them get scholarships. And then what are they doing there? You know, they're working, you know, for our summer employment program at 30 hours with yeah. no direction. We can so do more. We got to give them direction. There's opportunities in this county and, and we need to keep them coming. So there is a motion to second on the floor for item five and six. Uh, Please vote. All right. Oh, it passes unanimously. Thank you, Doug. You had a change of heart. Good. <laughs> See? He listens. Good. You had a change of heart. I think we'd probably need to revote. I lost my glasses and I've got Wendy's glasses. So. Yeah. I thought you had a change of heart, Doug. Thought I convinced you. Uh, All right. You can't make this up even on a soap opera. <laughs> All right, we're gonna revote again, so Doug can vote no. All right, there that's you what go. we'll do. All right. The item passes 4-1 with Commissioner Underhill uh, in dissent. Uh, we've dropped number seven, so now we're moving forward. Wes, with your uh, second Serious? Oh, yes. Before we move on, I need to get clarification from Deputy Attorney Huell All on right. the item that was dropped, number seven, just in case you have to take a motion for us to legally sure. move forward. Kristen and West, do you want to? It's required every six years. I'm reading your backup. We got this last night. So reading mm -hmm. your backup, the contract's required to be restated every six years. You're six years plus, so this is the time that you would do it. So do I assume we're going to operate off of the old contract, which will give your administrator the right to decide what the rates are going to be? I get an email every year from either HR budget or the administrator telling me what the rates are. So the new rates that would be sent would be 57% for elected officials compensation from the public treasury to the 401 and for the SMSC would be 31%. That would require a vote under a new contract. But if we're not doing this item tonight or today, and you don't have another meeting before July 1, we're going to operate under the old contract legally. You're giving Wes the authority to decide what the rates are. Do I have that correct? I must assume that's the case. I did, was not aware it was being dropped. Okay, how, how legally are we gonna, you have to have a contract and a rate in place for eight of the 25 in SMSC. Obviously, I'm not going to pay 57% for elected officials, and we do have a lawsuit being heard tomorrow. Wes, so Wes, how you does weigh this in on move that? forward? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, do yeah. you mind if I weigh in? And I think what I would say is we're gonna have further discussion, myself and the county attorney, and then we will notify you of what our plan of action is as we move forward. Okay. Even if we have to call a special meeting. To That's take my vote, question. Then if can, this isn't a valid that. contract, <laughs> you'll have to call a special meeting before June 30th because the rates change July 1. The first effective payday is going to be July 5th. So just as long as we all know what we sure. need to do. Yeah, no problem. I'm okay with that. Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Steve, you're right. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. Kristen, how about, how about we do this? Well, if I appreciate all the all the feedback. How about if the board just gives the administrator the uh, ability to 
notify the clerk of those rates. As she stated, she'll take that direction from him. As uh, if we give the delegate the, delegate the authority. If we give the, the administrator the authority to notify her of the rates between now and the next board action, I would expect if uh, uh, when the county when the county attorney is back, we'll take this uh, uh, we'll take this up again. But in the interim time, allow. West to give the rates to uh, Madam Clerk. Is that legal, Kristen? Can we do it that way? It's what Madam Clerk just you said. You can, but I'm going to help you out just a little bit. The law states that once you set the rates mm -hmm. and you can you convey those rates and you pay those rates in that first pay rate, payday on July 5th, our date is the 5th, maybe it's the 7th, you have to adhere to that for one year. So you'll have to research that part of the law when you convey a benefit through pay, if he conveys the benefit, it will be for one year until the rates change again. Thank you. If you'll just double Thank check you for the, that. Thank you for the advice, Madam Clerk. Anyway, but That's back to the Chris. direction. That's okay, Chris. Mr. Chairman, yeah. back, back to it. I mean, obviously the clerk says she's not going to pay it. We're going to court tomorrow. Uh, we, we have multiple time, multiple meetings before July. And when our council will be back in town, I mean, and so I, I, I certainly support dropping it until our council is in town. And we, we, we all have representation uh, and that it is a legal issue. And, okay. and there's no sense for us to debate it. Let, let the legal the judge will decide all of that tomorrow. Yep. Uh, you know what? And so let's decide it. I'm not going to swap spit. You know, it's yeah, been yeah, said yeah. that we, we, she's not going to pay it, not going to pay it. Let's the course decide. So are we going to take an action today? Is no, Stephen, no, no motion on, on what you said about Wes? I'm, I'm good with that, Steve. It sounded as if I was told that we did need, by Madam Clerk, the advice was that we did need to give Wes the discretion. It doesn't mean that he has to do something, but that gives him the ability to do something if based on his conversation with the county attorney who, who he'll be able to talk to, even mm -hmm. though she's not present today, mm -hmm. that gives him two weeks to, uh, to deal with that. And I, I mean, I do not, I mean, I think some part of the issue is the fact that we are, that we are, we're not back together scheduled before the end of the month. Right. So at least our action would give Wes the ability to do something if need be. Huh? And he can talk to, uh, and he can talk to Allison between now and then, and take whatever action the two of them come to go. So come is that your motion? Order. That is my motion. I'll second it. Motion is second. You don't have to second if you want to carry it. I'll second it. No big deal. Either way. Okay. Yeah. Lumen seconded it. Motion second. Please vote. Do you, are you good with that motion, Delena? Are you all right with it? Yes, sir. I'll go back and listen to the audio for the verbatim, but I've got a note. I've got notes from the whole conversation. Okay. Fantastic. Great. All right. All right, that item passes unanimously. Okay, very good. Moving, uh, moving forward, Wes, you're recognized for CAR 2. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are 49 items on the budget finance consent agenda. Please make the following changes. Hold CAR 2-31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36 for speakers. Mr. Chairman, we have, please also hold item 2, I believe. Item two, okay. Anything else, gentlemen, that we need to hold? Robert? Item seven. Item seven, okay. All right. Uh, Lumen? Mm, hold on. No, it's, it's okay. Okay. I'm fine. Doug, anything you want to hold? Uh, no, but if you could get the administrator to repeat the one that he's holding. Okay, let's. Uh, 30, it's 31 through 36. 31 yeah. through 36 plus two and seven. Yeah, we have speakers on those. All right. At, Anything, uh, seeing nothing else, Chair would entertain a motion on the balance. Move the balance. Motion. Second, motion and second on the balance. Please vote. <laughs> All right, balance passes unanimously. And before we uh, move forward to item two, which we'll start uh, with next, I always like to take the opportunity to say it looks like we're moving quick through these big consent uh, agenda items on our agenda, but uh, for the public's benefit, we each of us have um, multiple hour meetings with staff uh, on, and, and we go through these with a fine tooth comb, plus we have access to the backup uh, before the meeting. So I just, you know, sometimes there's chat online that we just rubber stamp it. That's just not the, tr not the truth, not the case. Each, each of us spend hours with staff going over this. so And all the backup is, of course, always available to the citizens uh, who wish to look at it. So with that, we're at CAR 2. Wes, you recognized. Uh, Commissioner Barry asked to hold number Commissioner two. Barry? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
Mr. Bender, Bender, you're still on the estuary board, correct? I serve on that, on yeah. that one as well. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, that's the two. Okay, I thought there were, I thought there were two. Okay. Um, do you mind, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Bender, if you would take some feedback back to the board? We, sure. I believe the board dropped this one time because maybe the action hadn't been taken by that board. Was that? We, we took action on it. Yeah, but I'm saying we dropped, our board dropped this one our, time and then yeah. you took it back to the estuary. You go back and look in the backup and the procurement of it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much effort was put in to solicit, uh, to solicit proposals. Mm -hmm. It seems like there was not a lot of uh, interest in the proposals, which would be surprising considering, you know, on a service like that, I mean, you're not, you're, you know, the, you're, you're not dealing with the cost of pipe going up and the cost of shingles going up or inability to get refrigerators in town. You're, you're, st you're still just dealing with a professional service and, you know, the, the, uh, the margin on services is, is generally still good. So with, you know, with a very broad outreach, it would seem like you would garner more responses than that. You know, that so I don't know what level. That's a of, very good point. I don't know what level of effort was put yeah. into that, but. I, I should speak with Matt on that. You know, I, I assume he did, but, um, you know, now that you mentioned that, Stephen, I, I, that, it might be a good idea for us to pull back and, and double check on that. I mean, I, I'd be willing to vote it down and I support that. yeah, I think, I think we need to put it back out and cause there's a lot of people that do that kind of work and maybe they didn't know about it. It could always be the case. I mean, so it, it seems like a, yeah. a reasonable, you know, it seems like a reasonable thing to think. I mean, yeah. it, you know, you, there, you know, there were two responses. I mean, but one, you know, across the board scored, you know, very, very low. You have to wonder the, you know, level of effort put into that one response. So it makes you wonder if we really had just one response. Yeah, I'll, I'll on speak to Matt level. about it. Well, so, I mean, yeah, I'll, I, so I, just for the, I mean, I believe the, the second response was a firm that had done some work previously for us. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I think, but we've seen, I will say, so, yeah. I mean, on professional contracts, and we've seen this, I mean, all, all of us have been on this board long enough to see this, so, you know, more often in engineering responses. Sometimes we'll get multiple responses, but some of those responses are almost non-responses. Right. They they're so far really out of line. Put no effort. They put they put very little effort into the response, and and it's a box check. It's cleared, yeah. and and it's almost as if, um, and I'm not saying this in this case, but I, I do know that it has happened in engineering. I mean, it's such a, such a large sector of uh, of public works, but phone calls get made and say, look, I've only got one response. You got to send me something. Mm -hmm. And you know, just send me something so I can have two responses. Yeah. That those conversations are had, and and you know, so again, maybe, I maybe guess this what, time what I'm trying to say is I don't think that actually happened here because the the second respondent was the one that actually did the rebranding, um, that that launched part of this, um, and so. You know, if it seemed like it was mailed in, it may have been for a different reason. Well, it scored very, very low. I don't. It, I don't it, I'm, it, I'm not saying. It, I don't. I don't know any of the people. Oh. I'm just. I'm just going by what's in the backup. It was scored very, very low for yeah. whatever reason. So so Robert, Robert, I, I agree with Stephen. I think we need to. We need to put it back out there, and maybe we need to. Sometimes when you get just a couple of bids like this on a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of companies that do this kind of work, and I know several of them. Maybe we just need to put it out there again and just make sure everyone knows about it. Maybe proactively. Um, uh, and and I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think the, the estuary committee is going to go anywhere. So I, I'd be supportive of that, Stephen. And I'm, I'm glad you brought it to our attention. I mean, uh, you know, and we've, I mean, if we end up having to take action on everything related to this, then, you know, and we have a, what appears to be a, a very functional um, procurement area right now, our purchasing department, you know, Wes has, Wes has done a good job. I, I, Wes, I don't know if they're fully staffed or it's just, I know it's very close, if not. Cl very close, Commissioner, yeah. and we are at a threshold where we will turn solicitations around in 10 days from the time we receive them. Right on. So what, what if, what if maybe the action is to, is to, to, is part of the agreement that the estuary board does the actual procurement. I don't, and this is not related to just estuary board. It's estuary board, it's other people that we have to end up voting on their stuff. If we end up having to award contracts and approve these, I always like to have the county more involved in the actual procurement process. Absolutely, If yes. we end up on the hook for yes. what, for the decisions that are being made. Yeah. If, it, if it never came to us, okay. I mean, that's, you know, on some level, that's not my business. But since it does come to us, you know, why does why it could, come though, Steve? 
we're the agent, or this is what I've been told uh, based on other discussions about the estuary program, we're the agent and we're the fiscal, or the, we're the fiscal agent is the term. And, but I thought we were cutting I mean, ties after that fiasco that's our we cases. had. I mean, that's why we've said we need to follow our HR rules, we need to follow our procurement rules. Yeah. Um, I don't know if but Is didn't on the here estuary, watching, Robert, Matt doesn't work for us anymore, does he? He does he work, not. He works for the estuary program. And they do their own procurement. I mean, they have their own bylaws, they own everything, correct? But I don't know. We have two members that sit on there, though. Yeah. I, so, we, I, I mean, so we have some control. Based, I mean, based if, upon this conversation, I'm not comfortable moving what if, forward. What if we just, what if we not look to re-procure it and did yeah. it in a 14-day, you know, an expedited, expedited, you know, responses and tried to, that, tried to get more responses out there? Yeah, let's do that. We're, I'll make some calls, we're, too. We're, ha we're happy to do that. I will say with these RFPs, uh, I've been on those committees, those ranking committees, and you know sometimes you, you have a firm come in and you know they're a good firm, but they, they don't put the work into the proposal, or mm -hmm. they don't put the work into the presentation. And so with the committee, all they can gauge by and go by is the presentation that is submitted. And so, uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's definitely a process. But we, you know, if we, need, if we need to go back out, we can go back out. It's not a problem. Steve, is that, is that going to be your motion? So, Wes, was it, did we procure this or did the escrow aid? We, did, we procured it. And the committee, I think, was Matt and a couple other folks that work with the SGRA program. I mean, that's, that's what I'd be more comfortable doing. But again, this is, I mean, I, I don't have the intimate interaction with the board that, you know, that my two colleagues do. So do you think, for, I don't think 14 days is going to hurt us. I, I'd like to make sure, and that way we know that people, all the people who would, could benefit from this had the opportunity to bid on it. So I, I would support that motion, Steve, if that's what you're going to do. That's what I would prefer to do. I mean, unless so, I hear some overwhelming objection or rationale that which, says. So what is your it. motion? Motion is to just, is to pull it today and re-procure that. Yep. I, you know, again, I, I don't know enough about the <clears throat> enough about the the academic part of it to say that there's any issues with the procurement the way it was put together. But just reprocure what was solicited prior. What I guess, Chips, is there anything in the solicitation that you would change now if the board did decide to put it out for 14 more days to try to solicit some more responses? Is there any way you would change what you put out on the street? No, sir. The scope of work would not change, uh, and and I, I did want to remind the board that uh, the grant that is funding this marketing campaign uh, expires in December, so we it, we, we are in, in a, a a time crunch to to get this done. If it takes uh, purchasing a department a couple of weeks to get the solicitation out, and then if it's on the street three or four weeks. You know, that's going to push us into August, and um, I, I don't know that we're, we're going to want to spend that much money for, for just a few months. The entire campaign has to be completed by 1231, or the money just has to be spent? Because they can spend, I mean, folks can spend $55,000 in a week. Yes, they sure can. Placing ads <laughs> that are beyond I mean, the time period, as long as they I, but, obligate but, the money. That's but, the way it works, Chips, right? They obligate the money by December. That, that's true, but when the grant expires, mm -hmm. the grantor, which is the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, mm -hmm. they're going to they're gonna want the work completed by the end of the grant. They're, sure. they're going to not want it extended further. So, well, I, so I just wanted to mention that, that there, there is a time element here uh, to, to consider. It's a good reason to move hard, to work hard. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, and Chips, I, I, you know, I have a lot of respect for what you're saying. I'm still more comfortable doing what we're doing. I think we can, I think we can get that done, especially if, if we were where we were with purchasing four months ago, five months ago, you know, last summer, I, I maybe I, I think my opinion would be different, but I'm, I'm more confident. And, and I know, I think Wes is spending time with, I think Wes is spending time with procurement every Friday morning or, or every, some period, yeah, some blocked off time each week. And that's probably a direct result of, of the reason that, that we're getting product out quickly. So uh, that, yeah, that is my motion. I'll second it. Discussion? Doug? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, as I've expressed a number of times from this dais and from that board when I was on it, um, I'm very concerned that the delta between what we planned for the uh, estuary program to be back when we were on the bark and what it is today um, is there's a significant delta there. Uh, and that delta uh, requires uh, the maximum amount of oversight that we can as a county because we are the recipient of the grant. Um, so, uh, Commissioner Barry, I think you're absolutely right to, to make this uh, motion and uh, very supportive. All right, please vote.
Yeah. Okay. We. Uh, okay, that passes unanimously. Uh, well, let's just see how quick we can get through this. But yeah, we we probably um, may want to take something in a different order if you if you got to be out by eleven. Uh, number seven. Uh, you wanted to pull that, Doug. I held it. Oh, you did. I'm sorry, Commissioner Bender. Yeah. You're recognized. Um, so I had a couple questions about this. So you know, previously the the city was not getting a 10 percent. Um, so they they are now getting 10 percent of this fee, and also um, the maintenance threshold for them to take is going up from 5,000 to 10,000. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to push a lot of the uh, I would say a number of the maintenance issues to the county. And Stefan, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, the current MSTU doesn't cover the services that we're providing in the library right now. Is that right? I'm sorry, could you say that last part one more time? The MSTU already doesn't cover all, everything that the libraries do, right? Uh, yes, sir. It actually has been covering uh, the needs. Um, certainly, uh, the the revenues that had generated over time were used to 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 build the the Beulah Library, which has caused a little bit of strain on the fund. But one thing I will certainly say, um, with with the uh, the growth in Avalorum, we have about an extra million dollars coming to the library budget uh, for next year. Um, in reference to the 10 percent, so I will give. Todd credit where it is due. He had a great idea. Initially, the city proposed 10% of the total collection uh, countywide. Um, Todd's idea was, well, let's limit that to just within the city limits, um, so which greatly reduced what the city would be getting. But there are some some very important maintenance needs at those city-owned libraries, and this will help address those and provide some of that funding for the city to be able to make those things happen. So other other components that are in our inner locals uh, that started with the initial um, funding of a unified library, there are certain things that the county can do and certain things that the county cannot do that only the city can do because the city owns those buildings. So, so the increase from the 5,000 to the 10,000 will allow the county to make some additional minor adjustments to the facility. Um, Todd could speak maybe a little bit more to that, um, how he feels like that is valuable, but also allowing the city to help with air conditioner replacement, roof repairs, and things like that uh, that, that are ongoing. So, And I guess that's a little bit of my concern is why we're paying for those for the city's buildings. And I, I mean, I know we're operating them and um, you know, I know we've heard about carpet replacement and we, we start getting into squabbles over who's supposed to pay for it, if it's us or them, and it's, um, you know, and uh, I mean, I know after Sally with the downtown one, we, we tried to help step in and, and uh, get an air conditioning unit and everything there and, and it, it dragged on a little longer and, um, you know, so I, I think it, it takes us working well with the city. Um, to, to make this happen. Um, and, and if and if they're just pushing more stuff to us, I mean, I just want to make sure we have the discussion, so. A absolutely. Um, like I say, there are certainly some needs over there, and these funds will help address the needs so that our folks who inhabit those buildings um, will have a little bit better environment. So, um, Todd, I'll let Todd kind of speak to some of the issues that. Um, is, the, is the carpet replacement? on there and it, it's very clearly defined in the new description that it's 100 percent the city's responsibility on the carpet um, the unspent funds unless something's changed since the last version i saw come back to us um, some of the major expenses we have is we still don't have a repaired roof at pensacola library it's probably around an eighty thousand dollar fix um, to work on this 1950s roof that had issues that just were overwhelmed by Hurricane Sally. Um, about $120,000 to replace the air conditioning system over at Tryon, uh, probably about $40,000 to replace the carpet at Tryon. Um, they did get FEMA, the city did get FEMA uh, money that will replace the uh, damaged flooring at the Pensacola Library, which they were starting to, hey, we're gonna get it, and it's like, you haven't fixed the roof. Well, and I think the, the issue with the downtown library, I mean, you've, you've got a number of things. Have they, have they fixed that northern wall where it's percolating under the glass and all that kind of, you know, those, those floor to ceiling windows? And, and I guess my concern is, is, is that some of those 
issues that keep coming from that is, is going to be us trying to continue to resolve them without a bigger fix. The, the, uh, at the proposed 10%, um, Stefan had estimated it to be about 200,000 that we'd be giving as, as aid to them. Um, it will be fully consumed to address major issues right now, the, the roof at the library. The, the meeting room that has a, a crack that allows seepage, um, there is not enough of a difference in the elevations right, between yeah. each side of the crack. They should be able to address that at carpeting just by epoxying in. The outside of the building, the unfortunate design of windows down to the dirt, that can be addressed with some kind of French drain. Um, but I'm sure that's you know, the current agreement's 5,000 um, because all the tree, uh, trees, utilities, other things in that area. Um, you know, I haven't got an estimate from anybody on it, but I'm sure it would exceed the 5,000 level. Uh, during the pandemic, we wanted additional wiring for additional outlets, kids bringing in Chromebooks and different things, and it was about $8,000 to put in additional wiring. Thus, the county couldn't do it, and the city didn't fund it. Okay. I just want to make sure we have the discussion. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So, um, And I spoke with Wes about this as well, and just making sure it's going to be um, something that works to mutual benefit and doesn't put us at greater expense, and I, I feel pretty comfortable with it. So, Chair, would entertain a motion on this? So moved. I, 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 do, I do understand what Commissioner Bender is saying, I do and, I, and I'm very hopeful that, that our partners understand what, uh, uh, you know, where our board is coming from in this. I'll second. Motion second. And for what it's worth, I did say in, in exchange for this, we should make them take ECAT back. <laughs> That didn't go over very well. Um, any other discussion on the library funding? <laughs> Please vote. All right. Commissioner, yes. not, not, uh, not discussion on the library funding, but we certainly would support a municipality uh, taking over a municipal bus oh, system yeah. again. I was joking, but I just, I, I, it didn't go over I, real well. I think it would go over very well with the citizens <laughs> <laughs> that don't live inside the city. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Okay, we're going to move to the next item now, uh, and that is going to be, let me find my page, that's 31. Yeah, we've got a number of speakers. I tell you, since, uh, gentlemen, because we've got a little bit of a time constraint, I might double back and come back to those items. Um, I think it might be more prudent for us to move forward and then come back to those items uh, if Commissioner May is going to be leaving. And uh, uh, if that, without objection, I think that's probably what we'll do. We'll come back to those items starting at 32. We've already passed the balance, and we'll go. Mr. Chairman, I yes. have a hard stop at 12 upstairs as well. Okay. Well, I think we'll be done by then. Um, I'm more worried about Commissioner May leaving at uh, 11, and, and, and I've probably got a hard stop at 11.30. So with that, we're going to go ahead and just move to your discussion item, get that out of the way real quick. All right? And so uh, I, would, I would yield the floor to whomever. Um, I spoke a lot about this topic, and... Uh, um, I think the I think the staff is looking for some direction on that. I'm sorry, Commissioner. All right, Miss. All right, Mr. Chairman. Um, I I'm not sure exactly what the um, you know what the outcome we're looking for today is. I I think based on the conversations that we had last week, I don't know that it's uh, I, I don't know that it was necessary to uh, to even be put on the agenda. I think it's something that the administrator and attorney may you know may could have handled. Um, you know, it appears to me as if the only the only course of action is to just absorb the uh, absorb the expenses out of the out of the uh, out of the general fund and leave MSBUs, MSTUs, and ad valorem alone and just move forward. Okay. Any uh, further discussion on that? Commissioner Underhill? If that's a motion, that's a second. Okay. All right. Uh, Wes, does that leave you with what you need? Okay. Very good. I appreciate that, Commissioner Barry. All right. We'll move forward with that. Um, next up, County Attorney. Um, yes. One of the things that I think is important to remember, though, is that we're, we're talking about this $5 million. Mm -hmm. If we really want to get fire service corrected um, and actually brought up to, to a standard mm -hmm. uh, within this county, we're at about a $25 million deficit. Now, obviously, that's not something that's going to be met in one year, that, but, uh, but we should recognize that if the um, administrator is able to find, and he will, he'll find $5 million to, to do exactly as uh, Commissioner Berry just said, 
that doesn't really actually fix anything. That just move that keeps us at a status status quo um, of, uh, of of a, a service that is well below the caliber of service being given by the men who are doing it, men and women who are doing it. Um, so yeah, the five million dollars this year, yeah, that's great. Uh, we're still. 20 million in the hole, 20 million underfunded uh, for what fire really needs to be able to do its job properly. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, and uh, you know, I'm def we're, we're defer to the the fire chief and uh, Eric Gilmore, and you know they they've put a plan together, and that was what they've requested so far as I've been told. So Commissioner Underhill, I mean, I you know if money was no object, we would give them everything they need, and I think so far as I've been told, Wes, that's what they needed, right? Five million. It doesn't include any capital expenses. Yeah, of course. We, well, we got to do that with our local option sales tax, which we will have a meeting for soon. That's coming. County Attorney's report it should be pretty basic. Uh, Kristen, you're, uh, Kristen, you're recognized. Yes, Commissioners. There are two action items on the County Attorney's report. The first is a recommendation concerning approval of a settlement in the case of Christopher Walden versus Escambia County. Nuisance value, five grand. Okay, and the next one? The second is a request to authorize scheduling an attorney-client session on Tuesday, July 19th at 8.30 to discuss pending litigation in the case of Whitesell Green Cadell versus Escambia County. Perfect. Chair, move, move count one and two. Okay, second. Motion to second. You got that, Delaney? Okay, please vote. Okay, the uh, county attorney's report passes unanimously. Okay, we're going to double back now, back to car two, number 31. And we have, we're holding that for speakers. Uh, Wes, do you want to describe your item and we'll bring the speakers up? It's a proposal to uh, use American Rescue Plan Act funds for construction of South Kim Strand Road drainage and sidewalk improvement project. Okay. 32 is pretty much the same other than it's for Olive Road West. It's a use of ARPA money. Okay. Uh, Proposed use of offer money. Chris Kerb, you're you're recognized. Thank you. I don't want to pull Andrew Bluer on you today and talk on every one of these, um, but I actually signed up for 31 through 36. So yes, I know y'all got a time constraint, so I'll be real brief. Um, Dee couldn't be here today. She's having some uh, health issues. But she provided a, a letter that I sent y'all, uh, her testimony. I'm not going to go through all of it um, for brevity, but I, I did want to point out a couple of things that she said. Uh, um, first of all, she wants to thank Debbie Bowers for uh, bringing these projects to you for a vote. And, uh, you know, I, I've told her, I said, you, you don't know what it takes to write a recommendation to the board and what you got to go all through to get it to the board. You know, two weeks before the board meeting, you're having to get that recommendation in. So uh, she basically said it's nice to see tax dollars spent on drainage needs in our county. Uh, I'll add to that um, the first two projects, uh, AARP, sounds like y'all been listening to us. Um, Originally, y'all didn't put very much into the uh, drainage aspect for uh, AARP money, and I see $7.785 million now. That's wonderful. So I'm in support of that. Um, D is, too. Um, one thing that comes up, though, is uh, she's been learning a lot from me. Um, she's actually... I've made her, her uh, she's been assigned a title as group expert instead of a neighborhood team leader um, because I've been teaching her stuff. And one question that she has is how much water's coming in and how much water's going out? We don't know. At least we don't know, don't seem to know in Santa Rosa County and Scammy County. City of Pensacola knows they, they've done a master plan drainage basin study for their whole jurisdictional area. And uh, they're getting a lot of, a uh, little bit more money than Escambia County and Santa Rosa County because they have that plan. Um, proof being uh, South Florida is getting a whole lot more of that money. Uh, I believe uh, Governor Santos uh, issued $403 million. 
uh, in awards back in March. Panhandle only got 9%. 0.95 is the millage rate for South Florida Water Management District. The mill rate for the Panhandle Water Management District, Northwest Florida Water Management District, is a 0.2 mill rate. Right. Point being, that, that's is your there, time, Chris. That's your time, man. Well, I'll All right, talk hey, on the Pamela, next one, man. Pamela Wyrick, are you reading a prepared statement? Uh, I, I'm just going to. Okay, so you'll have three minutes since okay, you're. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, three um, minutes. This time I'm going to state my address is 8902 Mars Drive. Mars Drive actually comes to Weller Drive, and that is the issue, is Schooner Landing, which is built by Holiday Builders, from the sales office down Weller to the very first house built faces only our house. So it goes from our back, where our shed is, to our front lawn. We are the only ones impacted. Okay, so I just wanted to make that note that that is Schooner Landing, that is the Holiday Builders, and they're facing us. Okay, um, I want to give kudos to um, uh, the new Matt Skipper because he took a look at what is a 50 year old supposed to be covered, but it's a ditch, and he was spot on, and it just didn't go anywhere. So I'm asking that this get checked out and researched because Kevin Mc, uh, Rob McCracken was there and so was Kevin Blanchard. So Kevin Blanchard just kind of, he'd been there since 2019. He has come constantly because we flood Kevin Blanchard since 2019, before the first house. However, Rob McCracken once again pointed out, I'm not in a plan, there's no funding, it's not gonna happen. So- Can I ask you, Pam, are you, we're talking about a specific project here on South Chemstrand, is it, is this- no. That's what we're, that's what oh, you signed I'm up. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's you, a drainage problem. I thought it was strictly drainage. No, well, it, it is, but it's a specific oh, project. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay. I, I assume you're going to wave in support. Yes, yes. You, you, either that or you'll speak to this project. Um, which you're probably. Uh, I guess I'm in the wrong place. I was at the wrong time. Okay. That's fine. I'm that's fine. We're, we're going to move, we're going to move forward. All right. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Mr. Burgos. Yes. Mr. Burgos. I come from Orlando, Florida. Okay. You're yeah. going to fill out a, a speaker form when you're done because you're... you're, you're okay. You're, I come from Orlando, Florida. Yes, sir. And I moved back up here. I call Crestview my home. Mm -hmm. But I've made Pensacola my home. And I see Pensacola going the way Orlando did when they started breaking out mm -hmm. and starting to build up. They sir, didn't plan sir, for... Sir, this the, is... Speak to the item. They didn't plan for the drainage... We've been planning this project. And, and the funding that they would need for the taxes, mm -hmm. they gave concessions and concessions and concessions to the businesses to pay less. So this is what happened. I met some of the commissioners that sat on the board for Disney coming in. They said they wished they knew, if they knew now what they knew then mm -hmm. or didn't know then, They'd have never let Disney build because they were not ready for the drainage. And I appreciate that, but sir, we're on a specific and topic. That's all. Thank you. Okay. I want to sure. say. Uh, thank and you. And it's all about the drainage. Thank you. Chair would entertain a motion on 31. Second. Motion and second on 31. Please vote. And Commissioner, this may get paired with the north side of Nine Mile Road project. Um, it's taking a long time, but they're 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 working on it. They're making progress. Mm -hmm. but, you know, it's. Uh, so, uh, Lumen, I need your vote on that one. Uh, timing may be oh, thank timing you. may be perfect. I'm not sure when completion date is, but it's it's still a ways out. You know, it's a very worthwhile project, and I would yeah. I would think folks would be very supportive of it. Okay, that passes unanimously. Yeah. Uh, 32, yeah, 32 West. You want to speak to your project? It's the same, same initiative. Okay. Uh, Chris, do you want to wave in support? I think 32 and 33. No, I didn't get to finish what I was saying. All right, okay, all right. You're recognized. Three minutes. Well, and that's what I was trying to say earlier. I, I would wave in support of all of these if you let me finish. Finish Give me a little more minutes. than three minutes. I mean, you know, Melissa Pino gets up here and gets to all you know, the time she You're wasting wants. your own time, man. Well, yeah, I know it. I'm going to speak on every one of them now. Good. Thank Good. you. Uh, so what I was saying before 
is the water management district in South Florida, they're getting all the money because they got a plan and they got a high mill rate, 0.95. They look at watershed approach projects. I'll repeat that, watershed approach projects. This project right here, Olive Road, guess what? Y'all got a watershed approach project going on right now. It's called Carpenter's Creek. This project drains into Carpenter's Creek. There's already recommendations, concept plans already set up. Um, so I think you need to make sure that uh, your wood engineering is working with uh, the engineer who gets selected on this project. Um, they have a lot of good data already done and uh, it would be a watershed approach. Now the reason I say watershed approach is we do a lot of band-aid projects in Escambia County because we don't have a watershed master plan for the whole county like the city of Pensacola does. We do a little drainage project, a little sidewalk project, and we push more water down the hill quicker. We create 10 more drainage problems down the hill because all we're doing is we got our blinders on to fix the drainage problem right where it's located. If you do it from a watershed approach, which is why South Florida is getting all the money, Panhandle only got 9% of that money. I'll sit down. Any more speakers? Yes, sir. Uh, Pamela. Pamela. Ma'am, I'm sorry, I didn't, it wasn't giving your last name, but you're the next speaker. Are you waving in support? I'm sorry, I can't. Pass. I'm sorry, Pass. passing, okay. And again, same thing, this is a specific flood item, uh, a stormwater item. Um, while we recognize that it doesn't necessarily meet the one that you're very impassioned about, certainly Flood Dep Defenders has been very supportive of every storm project that we've done. So um, any other speakers? Nope. No. Okay, Mr. Chairman, that's all speakers. Thank you. All right, Chair, entertain a motion on 32, please. Second. Motion second on 32, please vote. Passes unanimously, 33. Speaker? Okay, thank you, Chris. Thank you. All right, Chair would entertain a motion on number 33. Second. Okay, we got a motion and a second on 33. I guess Pam left. Okay, please vote. Okay, that passes unanimously. 34, hold for a speaker. Wave in support. Wave in support. Pam's gone. Chair would entertain a motion on 34. Move 34 in the affirmative. Second. Motion a second on 34. Please vote. Thirty-four passes unanimously. Thirty-five. Hold for a speaker, Chris Kerb. Yeah, I was trying to be brief here. Uh, uh, awarding this contract to uh, Green Peterson Inc.—that's a pretty good idea. Kobe's a fine engineer. You know, he worked with the county for several years and uh, got a lot of respect for him. Back on the watershed approach that I was talking about earlier. Uh, you have a basin study for this basin. Out of your 41 basins that you have, you only have 18 of those studies done. And since most of them are way out of date, and you started doing them in 1994, 18 of 51. Point being is uh, the, the question remains the same. This is from Dee's testimony. I'll, I'll read exactly what she wrote. When will you fund a study design of the Bayou Marcus Branch B so you can become eligible for a flood resilience grant program for our neighborhoods for construction costs to help multiple neighborhoods part of Branch B? Do you remember when Chris Kerb was telling you there is a hundred million annual in, a, in FRPG monies available annually for the next five years to all the municipalities in Florida? Now, why do I bring that up under Grand, uh, Bayou Grand Villa's drainage project? I'm very familiar with the project. I put it on the LOST list. In 2015, after, as part of the SWAT, uh, it was a high priority ranking project. Um, 
there you go. It's a basin approach type project. Basin approaches is how you need to do drainage. And uh, one other thing that D had written, uh, Jackson Street project that you've got going on, uh, a lot of us flood defenders went to the uh, uh, reimagined Jackson Street. And we talked with, we asked the question to uh, the WSP engineers at the uh, Brownsville Town Hall meeting. And the question was pretty simple. Um, what are you going to do about downgraded impacts when you do this? Well, a complete street project is still a sidewalk project. The water is still going downhill. Matter of fact, it's going to go downhill quicker because you got drainage problems on Jackson Street and you're going to be putting a drainage conveyance system in to push it downhill quicker. 3,500 foot on the west end of it's going into Winrose Bay Marcus Branch B. The engineer is only looking at a quarter mile to the north and a quarter mile to the south of Jackson Street as far as drainage. We have three basin studies that cover Jackson Street. It's not in the scope of work for them to look at downstream impacts, and it should be. They need a change order to consider drainage watershed approach. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Chair, we entertain a motion on this item. Move the item in the affirmative. Second. Motion second, please vote on 35. All right, 35 passes, uh, four uh, zero with Commissioner May off the dais. Moving to number 36, we've got a speaker, Chris Kerb. Okay, Pamela Wyrick has left. Chair and tenant motion Move on the 36. the affirmative. Motion on 36, second. Okay. Motion second on 36, please vote. All right, item 36 passes 4-0 with Commissioner May off the dais. Next item is number 49. Uh, let me see, I believe uh, we may have a speaker there. Nope, no speaker. Um, who pulled that one? Was that? It wasn't on my list. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought that I had it written right here. All right, uh, so that does that conclude our agenda? I believe it does. Anything else for the good of the order? We're adjourned.